Here at Candlestick Park, the rain just stopped a few minutes ago, but it certainly looks like it could start up any time, Joe. And for these Minnesota Vikings, they are the underdogs in a very big way. What can they do to beat the 49ers? Well, I think Minnesota, first of all, on defense, is going to have to get great play out of their front four. We talk about San Francisco's number one rated offense, and all you hear about is Jerry Rice and Joe Montana. Well, Jerry Rice will probably have some type of an impact on the game, but the guy that really may be the key is Roger Craig and the ability of San Francisco to run the football. Well, the quarterback picture for Minnesota settled just yesterday morning. Wade Wilson will get the start. That's right. Wade Wilson gets the start because Jerry Burns feels like, number one, he's a better athlete. Number two, he's healthier. And number three, he talked about heavy air. There is moisture in the air. Wade Wilson does have the stronger arm. Of course, Tommy Kramer has been suffering because it hasn't felt good. So consequently, he says, I'm going to go with Wade. The other thing is, he's a better scrambler. He expects to get a lot of pressure from San Francisco's defense, and Wade Wilson can make a big play for him running the foot. Ball. Well, the Vikings lead this series 14, 12, and one even, and they've won the last two meetings, including an overtime victory a year ago. But of course, that goes for naught. This season, the 49ers, with the best record in the NFL, are deservedly heavy favorites here today, up to 11 points. Ray Worshing will kick it off as the Vikings will have the ball first. Darren Nelson, the deep man. Rolling through the end zone after the ball came down at about the two yard line. So the Vikings will start from their 20. Wade Wilson, six foot three, 206 pounds out of East Texas State. Feeling he deserves the start. Got it yesterday morning. He'll face this defense. Stover, Carter, and Bohr. The linebackers McCall, Fonhorst, Michael Walter, Todd Shell for the injured Keena Turner. Two young corners with excellent ability. And the outstanding safety pair of Lott and Fuller. And the crowd into this already. Darren Nelson avoided one tackler and may have a first down. Todd Shell, the man to get him with help from Michael Walter. Joining Wilson for the Minnesota offensive team, Darren Nelson and Alfred Anderson. Carter and Lewis, the wide receiver, Steve Jordan, the tight end. Zimmerman, Huffman, Loudermilk, Greg Cook for the injured Terry Tausch and Tim Irwin. Tausch on injured reserve, but Cook has done a good job since coming over in a trade from Miami. Rice and Nelson are the starting running backs. Anthony Carter on first down has yet another for Minnesota out to the 45-yard line. Well, that's just a classic case of using the play action fake to pull the linebackers up at the bottom of your screen. You're going to see the linebacker step up into the line. See that linebacker step out of the picture? That gives Anthony Carter an opportunity to have a free space in that secondary to catch the ball. So the Vikings off to a good start at their own 45 yard line on two consecutive first downs. Rice, a game breaker. And Anthony Carter for the Vikings, the same kind of a threat. That's high intended for Leo Lewis. Tim McHire had the coverage. That time Minnesota went to, you're gonna see Minnesota use a lot of play action fakes, both on first and 10 and second down. What they don't wanna do is wind up in the second down and 10, second down and 11 situation all afternoon. That way San Francisco will make their substitution packages, bring in that nickel package, and make it tougher for them to, to gain first downs. Second and 10 from the 45-yard line of the Vikings, coming out of the I formation. Rice in motion. Darren Nelson, good blocking. Another Viking first down into San Francisco territory at the 43. Ronnie Lott forced him out of bounds there. That's just a good job by Gary Zimmerman and David Huffman on the left side. You see here, you see um, Jordan, Zimmerman, Huffman inside. They're just going to come around and clear the way and allow Darren Nelson to have an opportunity to turn the corner. Now, Mill McCall gets turned inside. Good block by Jordan. Now he's just got an alley to move right up the field. 12-yard pickup for Darren Nelson. The Vikings' rushing attack has improved dramatically in recent weeks. 200-plus last week against the Saints. Wilson under pressure. Dropped at the 38-yard line 
by Milt McCall, the linebacker number 53. He turned that into a gain of close to four. And that's why Jerry Burns has decided to go with Wade Wilson. There you see his numbers, 41 rushes, 263 yards, and tied Fran Tarkenton, which uh, record was set in 1961 for five rushing touchdowns. But that's the dimension that concerns the 49er defense, his ability to run. There's Coach Burns. Got to feel good about his decision to start Wilson so far. Second and six. Inside the 40, opening drive, Minnesota. Darren Nelson hit hard. First contact by the nose man, Michael Carter. It'll leave third down and about two for the Vikings. Carter, 290 pounder. Vikings have a lot of respect for him. He is a force in the middle. He's not only a force, he's a big, big force, big wide force. I think they said he took up about three spaces out there. That's right, he covers the guard, the two guards in the center all by himself in the middle. That's why he plays nose tackle. That was Dave Huffman's view. Third down, closer to three, required for a first from the shotgun. Wilson gets time, has his man, Leo Lewis, first down to the 31-yard line of San Francisco. Don Griffin, the cornerback number 29 on the tackle. Well, you see Minnesota just makes a decision. There he is, right on you. You're the defensive back. You see Griffin, he gets allowed to use his hands up on the line of scrimmage. Now, Leo Lewis does a good job. Now, they're right in that area of the football field that's been resodded. What's unique about it is the 40 yards or so, 40 feet or so that has been resodded, it's soft. You can sort of see it right in the middle, in between the numbers. It's darker than the regular field. Now, outside where the receivers are going to work, it's a little bit slicker. So that time he had a chance to plant his feet. First down, Vikings. It was in motion. This is Darren Nelson. Nelson slipped a little bit, trying to cut it back inside. And he's out on that slicker portion of the field. Phil Theisman just referred to. Tim McKire cut him down, about a gain of four on the play. For Minnesota, mixing the pass and run well on their opening drive. You know, one of the biggest decisions that the athletes had to make before they came on the field was what kind of spikes to wear on their feet. There are different sizes. There's a three-quarter inch spike, a five-eighths inch spike, and a half-inch spike. And they're different guys wear different lengths. Uh, Anthony Carter, for example, wears the shorter ones. Most of the 49ers are wearing the longer ones. On second down, a deep drop for Wilson. That's lots of time and goes deep. Incomplete intended for Carter. Ball a little overthrown. Ronnie Lott pretty, pretty good hit on him as the ball arrived on the fingertips of Carter, but I'm not sure he was going to haul that in. Ronnie Lott is the closest thing in a human being to a heat-seeking missile. Right at the top left part of your screen, there goes Carter up the field. He gets by the coverage. Now, from the left part of your screen, you're going to see Ronnie Lott come in. Carter knows he's on his way. You see him look down, and boom! I mean, that's a collision. So it's third down, a long six. Wilson scrambling, he's got lots of room. Has the first down and takes it out of bounds at the 17 yard line of San Francisco, an 11 yard gain for Wade Wilson. Give a lot of credit, give a lot of credit. Here's the secondary, you're gonna see everybody match up man to man. The safeties are gonna clear out. Wade Wilson's just gonna scramble up and find a hole. You see Jeff Fuller, number 49, jump out. Stover, 72, comes around, gets a hand on him. Now, with the secondary and man to man coverage, there isn't anybody for Wade Wilson. I haven't spoken to anybody, but I think that San Francisco is gonna to have to put a spy on Wade Wilson as this game goes on if he hurts them running the football. This is the 11th play of this impressive opening drive by the Minnesota Vikings. First down, short drop this time. Got his man Carter. Carter forced out at the five yard line. Don Griffin, number 29. And they spot it closer to the four, a 13 yard gain. We're talking about putting a spy on Wilson, his contribution. And here you see Anthony Carter's just gonna go out and run a simple out pattern. Definitely the offensive man has the advantage when the turf is slick as it is out there. Now, he's got a little short cleats on, so he stayed. But what San Francisco is going to have to do is assign one of their defensive linebackers or linemen to Wade Wilson and say, don't rush the passer when he goes back in the pass. You follow him no matter where he goes. Carl Hilton has come in as a second tight end. Penny and Dozier are the running backs. 
And the Vikings have had problems when they get in close in recent weeks. Dozier bobbled the ball, and Dozier gets about a yard. The rookie from Penn State, their number one pick this year. They've been using him when they get inside the 10 in scoring position, but it has been a problem spot. What they're going to do is you're going to see him try and block down and create a little bit of a crease right in here between the tight end and the tackle, bring the fullback in and bring D.J. Dozier around to try and turn it up. Now there's the blocking up front. He bobbles the ball a little bit. Now it's like walking on eggs. You see those little tiny petter, petter, petter steps? That's what happens when the field is slick. He can't plant and come upfield. Second down. From the three. Play action. Wilson with lots of time. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of the tight end, Hilton. Jerry Burns saying, here we go again. Problems from the five in. Well, here it is. It's just going to be play action. Jerry Burns into the fit. Bring the tight end around. Let him work to the middle. And then let Wade Wilson buy some time. Good job of blocking up front. Now you see Hilton, he's wide open. Wilson tries to make the play. He just flat dropped it. What happens when a tight end drops it? He knows they've had trouble scoring in close, so that's got to bother a quarterback as well. Wilson made his play. Carl Hilton flat out dropped it. Third and goal. Same look. Lofting it out of the end zone this time. So the Vikings continue to be playing with their scoring opportunities close to the goal line. An impressive opening series drive is halted and they'll go for the field goal. There you see Wilson now. He's looking again for that tight end from the left side. Now Hilton, he's getting banged around. Now you're allowed to do it. That's a five yard area. Fuller just does a good job of sitting on it. Chuck Nelson will attempt the field goal. The ball being spotted at the 11 yard line, a 21 yard attempt. And Nelson delivers. He's had problems on his first attempts. But this one he nails, and the Vikings open the scoring at Candlestick. 9.17 to go, first quarter, it's 3-0. Here, here's the part of the problems for the Vikings this year has been Chuck Nelson kicking an extra point or a field goal. Now look at how close this is to being missed. Bucky Scribner does a good job of getting the ball down, but you follow the path of the ball. It's just going to run right up there and just barely does make it through. So he didn't really, what one might call, stone kill it. <laughs> well, they got three. They should have had seven. Yeah, look at that. He puts his hands up like, eh, no problem. Went right down. Hey, they all count when they go through the post, so. But the Minnesota Vikings, heavy underdogs here in Candlestick, have opened the scoring. In line with Joe Theismann here in San Francisco. The rain stopped about 30 minutes ago, but it looks uh, by these skies as though it could start again at any time. Nelson's kickoff. Joe Cribbs, the deep man, from the two, bobbles it. And was finally dropped at the five yard line, and it was Neil Gugamus who made the tackle there. So the 49ers for a first start, Joe, are going to be starting deep in their own end. Will that change what they would normally do? Yeah, they, they, they normally try, I think, with this much of the field. What's interesting, before we get to that, is you look at this way the, the kickoff is going. They don't want Joe Cribbs to have the entire field to run to. So they kick the ball over in the corner. That way, you see how the Vikings are just sort of hemming him in, waiting for help. They respect his return abilities a lot, so they don't want him to make a commitment. You know, if, if I had this much of the field and it was the first play from down deep, I'd make Minnesota try and defense me. Maybe run a play action pass and try and get it deep to uh, Jerry Rice. They're going to swing it out here to Craig, and he is hit immediately. So Joe Montana facing this front four of the Minnesota Vikings. Martin, the rookie Henry Thomas, Keith Millard, and Chris Dolman. Headed to the Pro Bowl. Howard, Studwell, and Solomon. And the secondary with... Aggressive Isaac Holt on the corner. The experience of John Harris and the pro bowler Joey Browner. Second and 12. Play action and Montana for Rice. Two men on him and it's incomplete. Well, they didn't do it the first time. They did it the second time. You know, you got to put a lot of pressure on a defense. They've got 95 yards to cover. Now, what makes this play different, you'll see the catch. 
or the attempt of the catch by Rice going up for it. He does an excellent job playing the ball. He gets his hands on it, but John Harris manages to bat it away. That time, the 49ers lined up in an unbalanced line to try and get John Harris to line up. By unbalanced, they took one of their tackles and moved it to the opposite side of the ball. So they wanted to get Rice singled up so that Harris would have to cover more of the field. The Vikings responded well defensively. It's third down, and straight ahead goes Roger Craig for about two yards, and the ball came loose. But play had been whistled dead. And already a little bit of rough stuff going on down there. There have been words between Dolman and Paris. And they had done a little newspaper talking during this past week. Oh yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be one of those heavyweight, that's gonna be one of those heavyweight wrestling matches as the day goes on. One thing to look for now as the 49ers kick, they saw what Anthony Carter did last week against New Orleans. I wouldn't expect to, Max Runniger to kick the ball down the middle of the field. I would expect him to kick it from one side or the other to hem in Anthony Carter, just like the Vikings did on that kickoff to Joe Chris. Trying for the near sideline. It's not a long punt, but it takes a 49er bounce and goes out of bounds at midfield. A 43-yard punt for Runniger. And so the Vikes with good field position when we return. That's Max Runniger. Anthony Carter is back down here somewhere. He does not want to kick the ball to him so he can run either way. He's going to kick the ball off to the side so that his entire team can circle him and make it more difficult for the special teams to be able to make a big play, particularly AC, Anthony Carter. There you see the punt. Now, you see he has, he has very little room to operate with even if he did catch that ball. And for Runniger, it turned into a 43-yard punt. Still, Minnesota first down at midfield, right on the 50-yard line. The line of scrimmage. They lead 3-0. Real Lewis in motion. No running room for Alfred Anderson. There'll be a loss of a half yard. Scott Studwell, a veteran linebacker, Getting some attention, it appears, to his left ankle. Well, that's what happens. You have to go into the pits to get a tire repaired. And there, there, you see, there you see what Minnesota has done running the football in their last three games. 205 yards against, uh, against Minnesota, uh, Detroit, Washington 204, and against New Orleans last week, 210 yards. Now, what's so unique about that is they have not had one of their backs gain 100 yards in any of those games. But it's definitely an improved part of their offense. They've been thought of as a passing team. Swing pass out, Allen Rice, and no big play there as Shell and Walter nailed him just over the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and nine. Cleveland beating Indianapolis 38-21, as many people expected. The Cleveland Browns and their, their dogs played real tough in that cold, frigid temperature. They'll, They'll get the, the winner. winner. Yeah, Houston and Denver, that game tomorrow. Along with the Bears and Redskins scheduled for Chicago tomorrow here on CBS. Third down out of the shotgun. They hand it to Allen Rice. And Rice gets about four, but the 49ers read it well, and Jeff Stover tripped him up. For the Vikings, three downs and out. What's going to happen is you're going to see the linemen set. You're going to see good pressure, but the front of the San Francisco 49ers is not going to come as, as they came in that first series. They're a little bit more tentative coming off the ball. You see them react to the draw? Good call by Minnesota. Good play by San Francisco. Sometimes when you have good things on both sides, the defense wins out. Bucky Scribner back for his first punt. Dana McLemore and Scribner angling his punt. And it takes a Viking bounce. All the way to the two-yard line, closer to the one. So again, the 49ers will have to start from the shadow of their goal line when we return to Candlestick Park. Minnesota on top, three to nothing. Bill Walsh has had his offensive scheme upset here because they started from the five on their first series and now from the one. Craig, not much, got about two. The offensive lineup for the 49ers. Craig and Rathman, the running backs. Wilson starting at one of the wide receiver spots with Jerry Rice and the tight end, John Frank. 
Across the front, Bubba Paris, Jesse Sapolu, Cross, Colley, and the rookie, Harris Barton. Barton moving in for the injured Keith Bonhorst, great veteran tackle who's been on injured reserve much of the year. Second down and seven. And Montana doesn't like something he sees. An early timeout taken by San Francisco. How about that? There's Joe Montana jogging over. This is this is the kind of thing that a quarterback really doesn't like to use. There's five minutes to go in the first quarter and you've used one of your timeouts. Now it puts him in a real bind to try and be economic with the other two. When should I call one. Normally you'd call it when you're down close and in a possible scoring area. Evidently the Vikings have come up with something that was they must have had it. The only thing I can think of is San Francisco had a specific play called in that situation. The Vikings came up. There's Floyd Peters talking to Scott Stedwell. He probably told him I want you to give him this defense. Well it's something that the 49ers did not expect and the only option that Joe Montana had was to call the timeout go to the sidelines and talk it over with Bill Walsh. Well it leaves them a second down and seven from the four yard line and this team with the best record in the NFL has not had an opportunity to get started here in this first period. Ten and two non strike records and you can see if you throw out the three losses by the Vikings replacement team a very respectable eight and four. They did struggle near the end of the season losing three of their last four games. Second and seven. Montana changing up at the line of scrimmage. Montana in trouble in the end zone. Out of bounds at the seven yard line there'll be a flag as Howard hit him out of bounds. And the Vikings who had the 49ers buried back there take a bad penalty. Personal foul, late hit, 51 defense, 15 yards, first down. Well, here's you see, Minnesota does an excellent job of covering up. Joe Montana audibleized. He wanted to go off to the left to Jerry Rice on the post. There you see John Frank leading him. Now what happens is Montana gets out of bounds. He, he eases up and gets hit. This is this is something that you have to be conscious of when you have a veteran quarterback who's been around the referees will go out of their way to protect them. Now people might say that was a questionable hit but they will go out of their way to protect somebody like a Montana. Play action pass on the first down. Roger Craig. To the 39 forced out by Solomon 18 yard gain. This is a play action pass into the line of scrimmage. You're going to see the play action. Roger Craig is going to shoot out and the line's going to fire out, make it look like a run. Therefore, the linebackers get caught up. And you see Roger Craig is going to be out on the right side of your screen, wide open. Minnesota does not necessarily play man to man coverage. That time, they were up to try and stop the run. What a huge penalty taken by David Howard. First down, 49ers at the 39. Roger Craig. Just over the line of scrimmage. Good defensive reaction by Chris Martin. Martin in at the left linebacking spot, replacing Howard. Ball spotted at the 41 yard line. 404 to go here in the first quarter of play. Minnesota on top, three to nothing. Tim Ryan with Joe Thies, but if you joined us along the way, the Vikings. Took the opening kickoff and drove it down to a 21 yard field goal by Chuck Nelson. Flags everywhere as Craig got the ball. Full Scully. Number 69 offense. Five yard penalty. Replay the second down. Number 69, Bruce Colley. Well, the Vikings, false start. The Vikings use a lot of quick counts. Or the, excuse me, the 49ers do. Joe Montana gets up to the line. He goes 15, 30, hike, and they try and move it quick. That time he just anticipates it. Now there's Colley. He's just going to fly right out of there. See, he got to the 15, and then he took a breath. And when he took the breath, there goes Colley. So he's got to, you know, Joe's going to have to get up and stand under there and not take little breaths. So his <laughs> offensive linemen don't fly out on him. He can't breathe at all, huh? It'll be a long day for him. Montana certainly can't be happy with uh, what's uh, the way this game has started for them. He started from the five. He started from the one. And without that penalty to Howard, they wouldn't be out where they are now. 
Second down. Play action. And overthrows Wilson under pressure. Just fired that thing out over the sideline. Carl Lee had the coverage on Mike Wilson. It'll bring up third down. Here's the job that, that's going to have to be done. That's Chris Dolman out there in space. Here's Bubba Paris who's going to have to block him. Now, he's going to wait for him to get to him, and then there's going to be some kind of contact between these two men. There goes Bubba out to meet him. Now, Dolman's coming in. Now, there's Roger Craig to help out. San Francisco figures that they have a lot of respect for Chris Dolman. They're going to help Bubba Paris out with the backs if they can. Four wide receivers in on third and 13. And open is John Taylor. First down, 49ers. Thirty-yard line of Minnesota after a 33-yard gain. John Taylor doesn't get much of a chance. This is again, give credit up front to those guys blocking for Joe Montana. You see the pressure, number 75, Millard outside, Harry Thomas up the middle, Dolman comes around outside, Montana reads the coverage. John Taylor just did get by Joey Browner. Again, there's Big Bubba, lower left-hand part of your screen, number 77. That's what's called running the defensive guy around the cup. Niners with a first down at the 30-yard line of Minnesota. Montana drills to the sideline and incomplete. Mike Wilson, the intended receiver. Carl Lee had the coverage, and it was good coverage. Second and 10. Well, Dolman had raised the issue in terms of Bubba Paris during the week, saying, how is he going to stop me? I've never played against him, but I'm not concerned about him. And Bubba was likewise unconcerned about Mr. Dolman. Yeah, but his teammates were because they put a mouse in his locker. And they said, we don't want you to be afraid of anything, so here's a little mouse to keep you comfortable. <laughs> he said, if you're not afraid of Chris Dolman, you're not afraid of a mouse. Montana, ball seemed to slip out of his hands there. Whether he was trying to pump Joe or what happened on that play? That's one of those, I want it back, give me it back, but it's too far gone, I can't get it back. What he did is he wanted to go to uh, Roger Craig or Tom Rathman out of the backfield and what happens you'll see Craig coming out right in the lower part of your screen right here he's going to circle now Montana sees him initially on Joey Browner he wants to make the throw but Browner got in position you see how he tries to oh that's one of those <laughs> come back to me please well he was lucky that it's only an incomplete pass that's why it turns out to be a good decision third down and ten Rathman in motion side handoff for Craig Joey Browner cuts him down, well short of the first. A pickup of about five to the 25. And we'll bring up fourth down. Studwell helping Joey Browner on the tackle. Ray Worshing comes on as the 49ers will attempt to tie it up. They'll spot the ball for Worshing at the 33-yard line. A 43-yard attempt for Ray Worshing. And you can see his numbers. He's uh, inside the 40, he's 85%. From outside the 40, he's only a 46% kicker. And he's got it. So the 49ers with a somewhat sporadic drive that time, nonetheless have tied it up with 1.37 to go, first quarter. Tim Ryan with Joe Theismann as we have a tie football game. Time winding down first quarter. Joe Montana, a somewhat erratic beginning for the 49ers because of their bad field position on two consecutive Minnesota kickoffs. But nonetheless, 74 yards, 10 plays, using up 338 on the clock. And a field goal by Worshing. Kickoff comes down at about the eight. This is Darren Nelson to the 30-yard line. And the former Stanford star, recruited by 49er coach Bill Walsh, gets it out to the 30 for Minnesota. Yeah, he, well, the winner of this game will meet the winner of that game, which comes up tomorrow here on CBS. The Redskins at Chicago, two division winners in a divisional playoff. 12 o'clock Eastern time, the NFL today will start things off for us. I guess you could say fairly that the weather may be a little chilly and blustery in Chicago, wouldn't you? Or well, downright cold, really. Downright cold. <laughs> First down, Vikings. Complete to Carter. 
Quick delivery from Wade Wilson out to the 42 yard line and a Minnesota first down. Holmo and Fuller on the tackle. Again, Wade Wilson with that quick little play action fake into the line of scrimmage. Now what happens is as soon as Minnesota's guards block down, the linebackers step up, and that creates a lane for Anthony Carter to catch the ball. There you see Joe Montana on the phone talking to Mike Holgren, the quarterback coach, trying to get an idea of what they see from upstairs that Minnesota is doing defensively. Wilson, 6 of 10 here through this first period. Alan Rice. Good pursuit by the 49ers. Five red-shirted San Francisco players around the ball. It'll be a loss of maybe two. Shell and Walter, Charles Haley all in on it. You're going to see Charles Haley do a great job. He strings this whole play out. As the line pulls, he doesn't give Darren Nelson a place to cut up. Right at the top of your screen, number 94, takes on Steve Jordan now, takes on Darren Nelson. He just strings Rice out all the way and allows the defense an opportunity to flow. San Francisco has great team speed on defense. Down to the end of this first period on second down. Wilson with time. Into traffic, picked off by Lott. A flag is down. Ronnie Lott. That's going to be pass interference on Torrey Nixon, number 20. Leo Lewis coming in and saying that's what it is. Ronnie Lott coming over. Interference, number 20 defense. First down. You called it, Joe. Now how about uh, Wilson, though? making that pass into the traffic there. Well, I'll tell you, I think he's being confused a little bit. Now, Leo Lewis is going to come in from the top of the screen. He gets good protection, but you see in this picture, there's only one, two, three, four San Francisco 49ers. That means there's seven of them out there playing defense somewhere. Right in the middle is Tommy Homo, and now you see Torrey Nixon. He just jumps all over Wilson. Actually, Ronnie Lott got his hand on the ball. So this may, uh, you know, this one might get reviewed because because if a, if a defensive player hits the ball, you can't have interference, but you never know. Well, we've reached the end of the first quarter here at Candlestick. We're all tied up at three apiece. Tim Ryan and Joe Theismann at Candlestick Park under very overcast skies. The Vikings and the 49ers in this NFC Divisional playoff, and after one quarter of play, we're all even. Now, right now, when you consider that the San Francisco 49ers are prohibitive favorites, we've got to say that the Minnesota Vikings have, in effect, taken some lead here. They have the ball at the 50-yard line. Roland Wilson, and he finds his man. That is Anthony Carter. A lot of credit to Wade Wilson. Darren Nelson was the intended receiver coming to this side of the field. Now, Anthony Carter is just clearing the way. You see Rice get out. You see Fuller, he's going to cover Nelson. Now, Carter just sees what Wade Wilson trouble he's in, and he just runs to an open space. Good heads-up play by Anthony Carter. A 14-yard gain. The interference call keeping this Vikings drive alive. Ronnie Lott had picked off the pass, but interference was called against Torrey Nixon of San Francisco. Darren Nelson. To the 32, Kevin Fagan on the stop, number 75. 49ers will use a, a whole group of defensive linemen out there. Kugler, Carter, and Board started. But Jeff Stover, Kevin Fagan, Larry Roberts have all been in. And Randy Glover, the seventh down lineman. And no doubt he'll get some time before the day is out. There's Ronnie Lott, number 42. He's sort of like the senior statement. Now, you'll notice also that towel with the number on it, number 42. That looks a lot like the one that Jerry Rice wears, and it should, because Jerry Rice folds Ronnie Lott's towel for him. <laughs> Neatly pressed, as one would expect from the neat Mr. Jerry Rice. Wade Wilson walking away from the line of scrimmage. But the 49ers take a defensive timeout. Their second timeout, and the 49ers certainly a little confused defensively, and they took the timeout on offense, and they didn't like the look of the Viking defense. To the 30-yard line, it'll bring up third down and about three yards to go for a first. 
We have a 3-3 football game here at Candlestick Park as the Vikings took the opening kickoff, got down to within the five and ran into problems which have plagued them, had to settle for a 21-yard field goal by Chuck Nelson. And there you see the numbers, only 15 yards rushing for the number one rush offense in football. 15 yards for the 49ers, 41 for Minnesota. They're right on their last four game plans running the football. Wilson's 43-yard field goal tied it up for the 49ers. That's how we stand. Wilson to the sideline, complete to Anthony Carter. Crowd thought he was out of bounds. The officials say otherwise, and it'll be first down at the 19. Boy, when you're hot, you're hot. When things are going well for you, they're going well for you. That's Gustafson. That's Carter. He's going to run it out. He's going to run it out. I'll let you decide which one you think Wade Wilson was throwing the football to. Now, did he overthrow one, or was he really throwing it to Anthony Carter? Doesn't matter. Carter with the catch. His fifth catch of the afternoon. Now, Carter had only 38 catches coming into this game for the regular season. But the Vikings have uh, indicated that they wanted to get the ball into his hands more often. He is their big play maker, and they've thrown it to him five times here through the first quarter and just into the second. What the referees are doing now is the 30-second clock did not start. With the clock operator, reset the clock at 12.45. The clock was running. 12.45. It was the regular clock that was running. What they did is they forgot to stop the uh, ball when the guy went out of bounds. The referee Gene Barth sorting that out. Jerry Burns saying, here we are in the red zone again. Let's see what they can do this time. Action. Wilson under pressure, just pops it up. And it goes down close to the goal line, but in open territory. Larry Roberts and Charles Haley had the pressure on Wilson. Well, that's a little bit of the problem you run into. That time they tried to run Alfred Anderson after the play action fake to the halfback. They tried to run him through the line. But uh, you've got, if you run a play action fake and run another back through, you got the linebacker grabbing it at both backs, you got the defensive line grabbing at both backs, and he's just not going to run through scot free. A lot of credit to that front for San Francisco to put pressure on Wilson, not give him the time to see or throw the ball. 49ers were number one against the pass in the NFL this year. And second down, Wilson flushed. Picks up the first down to the seven yard line. Michael Walter forced him out. Again, we're seeing the same thing. That's why Wade Wilson is starting today. You're going to see good pressure from the defensive front of the 49ers. Good job by that offensive line of the Vikings. What happens is they give Wilson an avenue to run. Now, this is almost like the old single wing when you're back in a shotgun. Everybody's in man-to-man -man coverage. There you see Jeff Stover trying to run him down, but he's not going to catch Wilson. He knows exactly how far to get for the first down, and he picks it up. Bob Schnelker, the Vikings offensive coordinator, has been picking up some gray hairs when his team has gotten into this territory. On first down, touchdown. Carl Hilton, the man who dropped the touchdown opportunity on the Vikings opening drive, Makes up for it there, the second-year man from Houston. Well, what happens is it, you're just confusing the linebackers. He's going to be coming from this side and come right through. We'll let you make the catch in the living room. There goes the motion of, the, of Leo Lewis. Now you see a good job up front. The linebackers are picked up. Wilson just makes the throw. Ronnie Lott was in coverage, but he couldn't stay with him. Carl Hilton with a touchdown. Chuck Nelson will try the point after. Bucky Scribner, the punter, will hold. And Nelson nails that right down the pipe. And the Minnesota Vikings have taken the lead. What happens here is Leo Lewis goes in motion. Steve Jordan moves out. Carl Hilton comes in. And Farnhurst blitzes. So there's a big hole in here for him to make the catch. There goes the motion. Now, Wade Wilson, he sees the linebacker blitz. There's a big hole. Ronnie Lott can't get up because of the pick caused by the crossing of the tight ends. You wind up with six. 70 yards, 4-11 on the clock. Now, Joe, this is an interesting number. 
12 minutes of possession time for Minnesota and five minutes for the 49ers. Tom Rathman returning that kickoff to about the 36 yard line. A little scramble for the ball, but the 49ers maintain possession. Well, he flat fumbled that ball. I mean, that ball was knocked back. Harry Sidney, Joe Cribbs jumped on it. You'll see Rathman right here. He's going to go in. The ball's going to pop back, and the two guys who are the return men are going to come up and jump on it. This is just some good, hard hitting. Minnesota deciding to squib kick. They don't want the hand, the ball in the hands of the big guys. Now there's the big hit. There goes the ball. And there comes Harry City. He's going to cover it. A rather shaky looking 49er team to this point in the game. They trail 10 to 3. Tight end, Frank in motion. Jerry Rice, a flag down in the backfield. What a catch by Rice. That's going to be, that's probably going to be roughing the passer. Tripping, tripping on number 69 offense. Tripping. Well, it's against San Francisco's Bruce Colley. I stand corrected. So the fine catch by Rice goes for naught. Picking that off his shoe tops. Collie, of course, yeah, for a lot of people don't realize this, but he went to the same high school as Tommy Kramer. Robert E. Lee High School. There you're gonna see right there, number 69. See him, see him get out there, watch his right leg. There it goes, if you can't block him, you old stick the old foot out. There it is. That's little... Keith Millard. And of course, he had a big week last week against New Orleans. Roger Crane. Some of that lost real estate to the 32 yard line of the 49ers. But Joe, there's something not clicking here on all cylinders for the San Francisco team. You've had experience with two weeks off going into a Super Bowl. You've had to play short weeks. Does it help or hurt? What happened here with San Francisco? I think I think Minnesota, first of all, is in a groove. They're playing every week. They've been hit every week. They're fine. San Francisco hasn't hit somebody in 14 days. They were lucky to be at 3-3 in the first quarter. I think you're going to start to see, and San Francisco is going to have to play better football, but they should start to pick up momentum as the game goes. Second and 13. Tight end Brent Jones out to the 40-yard line. A lot of telephone conversations going on. Ronnie Lott wiping off. He just called upstairs to find out from George Seifert and the defensive staff what they can do to shut down that Minnesota offense. I still could believe, I just got to believe that the guy that's really hurt them on offense for Minnesota has been Wade Wilson. They've got to assign somebody to him and say, look, we got to keep you one-on-one -on -one with this guy and not let his running hurt us. 140 yards of offense so far. For Minnesota. Montana gets time, but good coverage. Now he tries to improvise to Wilson. It's incomplete, another flag down at the line of scrimmage. That's gonna be holding against San Francisco. This team has definitely been put out of its rhythm by Minnesota. 61 offense, holding. Tony refused, fourth down. Jesse Sapolu, the left guard, the second year man from Hawaii, charged with the hold and the 49ers will have to punt. That's one on the right guard, Bruce Colley, and one on the left guard, Jesse Sapolu. And those guys are usually going to have to be responsible for number 75, Keith Millard, who when we talked to him yesterday, did he look a little bit, you know, up for this game to you? Oh, he was charged. What's more, he felt that he could be successful against both of them. He had studied their uh, work habits very well and thought that he would be the better man. Runniger will punt. And no, well, fakes a pass and now kicks it. Carter signals fair catch, an alert play by Carter at the 25-yard line. Also an, an alert play by Rick Finney going out and covering Harry Sidney. So we have a timeout on the field with the Vikings leading 10 to 3. That's Harry Sidney. Now, he's going to go in motion. Now, the reason he's doing that is because they don't want to get him blocked at the line of scrimmage so he can get down and put pressure on Anthony Carter. Rick Finney's going to jump out at the last minute, but Runniger sees him open and says, oh, my goodness, I can throw the ball to him. Now, you see Sidney go in motion. Nobody's on him. Runniger looks, he almost throws the ball because it looks like nobody's on him. Then he winds up having to kick it. And Sidney was headed downfield. He wasn't looking for any pass. First down, Vikings. Intended for Darren Nelson out of the backfield, thrown out of bounds, incomplete. The linebacker, Michael Walter, had the coverage on him. That's Brent Jones, the second tight end, getting some medical attention. 
Grant Jones uh, not getting a whole lot of uh, playing time until today. He's out there get I want a to, pass. I want to make a point about the, you see the different heights of the, the half inch spike, the three quarter inch, or the five eighths inch spike and the three quarter inch spike. This is what the players are wearing. Various styles of this on the field today. And it is second down and 10. So far the turf does not appear to have been any kind of a problem. Wilson. Complete Darrell Nelson, the intended receiver. It may have been that he was just throwing that ball away. Some of the fans thought so. Yeah, and there's a very, very slight mist starting to fall on the field, which could make that outside area, the unnew sodded area, a little bit slick. Again, I, I gotta believe that the 49ers have been thrown a real curveball with Wade Wilson being able to scramble around and move around and make big plays. Third and ten. Carter, he's got it. Out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Ronnie Lott caught up with Anthony Carter, or he would have been in the end zone. An injured Viking down back near the line of scrimmage. It is Greg Cook, the right guard, number 68. Here's Anthony Carter. He's going to go in and run a corner pattern on Griffin, number 29. Now, these are the things that scared Bill Walsh. It's the tip balls he said he was worried about. He runs a corner pattern. He turns Griffin around. Griffin has a shot at the interception. It goes off his fingers. Anthony Carter catches it twice on the rebound. And Ronnie Lott manages to run him out of bounds. Now, here you see Griffin cut in front of him. He goes up, he will get a shot at the ball, and it just goes off his fingers. Instead of trying to knock it away, he was trying for the big play, the interception. And Anthony Carter off to another big afternoon. A 64-yard gain, his sixth catch, 126 yards already. And 10 minutes to go to the half. Well, they planned to get the ball into his hands, and indeed they did. He has outgained the entire 49er offense. The Vikings have had the football most of the way with 10.33 to go here in the first half. Now, Greg Cook is still down receiving attention back at the Viking 20-yard line, and it'll likely be uh, Mark McDonald or Randy Rasmussen, apparently, is going to come in to replace him. That could be a severe loss for the Vikings because Cook, of course, uh, came in from Miami to replace the injured Terry Tausch, who's on injured reserve. 10-3, Minnesota lead, and they are down at the 10-yard line of San Francisco. And one of the big pluses for them has been their offensive line staying in one piece. Zimmerman, Huffman, Loudermilk, Cook, and Irwin have all stayed together. Bill Walsh has taken off his coat. He doesn't have the headsets on, but I'll tell you something. He is very intently pondering what is happening to his football team. You know, even on that play, Joe, there was a little defensive confusion. Just as the ball was snapped, Ronnie Lott was passing an instruction to the right cornerback, Griffin. It wound up that it was Griffin who had the coverage on Carter, and we saw the ball tipped. Griffin actually did a, a pretty good job, although he couldn't bat the ball away. Well, truthfully, I, I don't think it was. It was just, it's the simple bannering that goes on between uh, defensive backs, the safety to a corner. I don't, I don't think it was so much confusion uh, as it was with hollering instructions. That's one of those plays that you just can't design. You design the route. You tell the quarterback to throw it in a certain area. Now, Griffin, it goes off his hands. Call it what you want, a stroke of luck, bad luck on either side. But it's one of those plays in a ballgame that makes a difference. Bad luck for Greg Cook and the Minnesota Vikings right now as they brought out the stretcher. As you can see, the 11-year veteran from Arkansas. Greg Cook uh, describes this offensive line of the Vikings as the regular guys, kind of lunch bucket type ethic that uh, they've created over the season. Zimmerman, Huffman, Laudermilk, Cook and Irwin. You know, the world of football, the world of sports has many great moments. I have been exactly where that man is lying right now. And I'll tell you, that's one of the worst feelings and worst moments that you go through is having to be placed on a stretcher and taken out of a stadium. Well, we certainly uh, hope, hope he's all uh, right. for Greg's uh, sake. But uh, it's not a serious injury. We'll get you a report as soon as possible. 
Now this is Brent Jones of the 49ers and uh, apparently the word on him is a sprained knee and is doubtful to return. That would reduce the 49ers to one tight end John Frank. Ron Heller with an injured hamstring was placed on the inactive list today. This is how he got hurt. You see him covering up on the ball. He just takes a shot right on the knee. Ooh. Ouch. That just gets bent back. Bill Walsh opted to go with a kind of a lean offensive unit today, loading up on the defensive side. He had two tight ends in uniform, four wide receivers, and four running backs, two quarterbacks. So now with the Jones out of there, uh, he is reduced to just John Frank as a tight end today. And meanwhile, Greg Cook of the Vikings being wheeled off. We'll get you a report on him as soon as possible. Randy Rasmussen comes in to replace him, and the Vikings, when play resumes, have first and goal from the 10-yard line. Ten to three, Viking lead. 10:33 to go, first half. Startling developments in Candlestick Park. Alfred Anderson got a couple stacked up by Michael Walter, number 99. Now, right here in this series of plays, San Francisco has got to hold Minnesota to a field goal. That's what the defense can do to help its offense out. Minnesota, on the other hand, has got to not fool around as they have had a history of doing, not getting the ball in the end zone. A big boost for them would be to get the ball in the end zone. There's Greg Cook being assisted and carried off. Feel on a stretcher. Second down. Anderson again, nowhere. Kevin Fagan, who just came on with three more 49er linemen on the second down, does the job there. Third and goal. Bob Snow, I'll guarantee he's saying we're going to throw it somewhere. Um, you know, if I was in this situation with, with the job that Wade Wilson has done running out of the shotgun, I'd go back in the shotgun, run my four receivers out the field, and if Wade Wilson gets a chance to scramble around, that's going to throw as much confusion into that 49er secondary as anything. You saw Hassan Jones come on, number 84, as one of the extra receivers. They run the ball inside. Darren Nelson gets to the five-yard line. Well, they tried to cross him up with a run, but the 49ers didn't buy that. You know what that tells me? If I'm, as I'm watching, it, that tells me that Minnesota has got a lot of confidence in their defense to shut down that San Francisco offense. Here you're going to see him come from the right side. They try and do a little trap blocking up inside. There's Tim Irwin on Ronnie Lott. And you see the 49er defense come in and get a lot of support. Here's the best news we've received so far today. Back spasms, the injury report on Greg Cook, not serious, not serious. So Greg's the family and friends looking in can be reassured. From the 13-yard line, a 23-yard attempt by Chuck Nelson is good, and the Vikings have widened their lead as the rain starts to fall again here in San Francisco. The Vikings are raining on the 49ers parade, 13-3. Well, Joe Montana itching to get out there and crank it up. The Vikings have had the ball much of this first half with 8.27 to go. There's Floyd Peters, the man in charge of that Minnesota defense. He's wearing those glasses. He was a, you know, he was a prison guard at San Quentin Prison. You don't think he's one tough cookie. I'd believe that just by looking at him. He I mean, looks like a prison guard. I mean, that, that, he was. Not that I have at, any familiarity at, with that. Oh, but. really? At the <laughs> age of 19, he was a prison guard. Nelson will kick it off. Let's this one fly. And it goes out of bounds at about the three yard line. Uh, Sydney, the deep man, a leader on that special teams unit for the 49ers. This is where that new rule comes in now. The 49ers can either have them kick over or take the ball to 35. And uh, they're going to take the ball to 35 yard line. I mean, it's, that's pretty darn good, good field choice. Position. Why not? Sure. Well, compared to what they've had, they started from the five, then they started from the one on the next possession. Absolutely. 
So they're happy to be out here where they can start to run the offense that Bill Walsh had prepared for the game. Well, Although yeah. now, of course, the score has had an effect on it. Well, he likes to list the 25 starting plays of the game, but I'll guarantee you he's had to do a little erasing on that card of his to get some, try and get something going for his ball club. On first down, Roger Craig, nowhere. Lost about a yard. Studwell on the stop. It'll be second and 12 for the Niners. The ball at their 34 yard line. There was a, the San Francisco 49ers with that potent offense of theirs have only been on the field seven minutes. The Minnesota Vikings over 14. Play action, Montana has Rice down the middle, incomplete. Good reaction by Jesse Solomon, the linebacker number 54. Now uh, to get an update on that injury to Gray Cook, let's go to Irv Cross. Tim, I'm standing out here in front of the uh, Vikings locker room. You see the trainers are coming out again. Uh, Greg Cook went in. I talked to the doctor on the sideline. The preliminary investigation uh, on the sideline, the doctor told me that it looks as though Greg might have muscle spasms, back spasms, not serious. They don't know whether or not he's coming back. They're checking on him in the training room and uh, doing further examinations. Tim? Thanks, Irv. That's uh, obviously a great news uh, for all football fans, certainly Greg's uh, family and friends watching today. Third down. Sideliner for Clark, picked off. Reggie Rutland, the rookie, touchdown. No flags. Minnesota has San Francisco in deep trouble. The rookie from Georgia Tech. We have a stunned candlestick park. There are the Minnesota fans waving those towels. What's going to happen is you're going to see Clark go down. He's going to run it out. Rutland's just going to sit on him. Now, it is misting a little. The ball is a little heavy. Montana doesn't really get a chance to step up into the pocket. The ball's thrown a little bit back to the left. Rutland steps up and takes it the distance. And this is the thing that Bill Walsh feared the most, is the little plays, the turnovers that he felt like his quarterbacks weren't prone to like they were in last year's game against Minnesota. Nelson with a point after. 7.36 to go in the first half. And this crowd stunned in the near silence as Minnesota leads 20 to three. Tim Ryan with Joe Theismann, 7.36 to go in the first half. The rain falling again. And the Minnesota Vikings stunning the San Francisco 49ers. 20 to three, a 45 yard touchdown on an interception by a rookie, Reggie Rutland. Nelson's kickoff, squibs it again. Line drive fielded nicely by Rathman. Rathman found a little hole and took it up to the 47-yard line. Good return for Tom Rathman. Well, what happened on this touchdown play? Well, what happens is there's Reggie Rutland. He's just going to back up a few yards. Dwight Clark's going to come down and run it out. Joe Montana throws the ball a little bit behind him, and Rutland takes it the other way for one of those TDs. Now you see him set in the pocket. Rutland just plants that back foot and drives on the ball. It's thrown a little bit to the inside and Rutland high steps it on into the end zone. Tom Rathman tried to catch him but couldn't. You heard the crowd exhorting their offensive team here of the San Francisco 49ers. Montana will throw on first down. A flag on the play as Roger Craig nowhere. Jesse Solomon waiting for him. Jesse Solomon has been a designated spy. Now we talked about San Francisco possibly thinking about putting one on Wade Wilson. What has happened is Minnesota said, we have a lot of respect for Roger Craig. Jesse Solomon, he's yours the entire afternoon. Illegal motion, number 86, the tight end moved while the man was in motion. Penalties refused, second down. John Frank, a guilty party on that play. Jesse Solomon covering on Craig as the spy, as you referred to him. Joe, he said, I covered Eric Dickerson and Herschel Walker this season. I'm looking forward to trying Roger Craig. He's a hard runner with great hands. And Solomon made the play there. Montana gets time, has his man Wilson. Mike Wilson into Viking territory at the 48-yard line. 
Tim, I believe they're down in about three. This is a very important series for the San Francisco 49ers. There's 640 to go in the half. They've got to get some kind of points on the board. They're down by 17. They feel, I would, I would guess they got to feel if they get to, to 20 to 10, or at least get some kind of points on the board, then they're going to be able to readjust at halftime. They've got to stay alive to get to halftime to make some adjustments. Montana, 6 and 13, under pressure. Incomplete, intended for the tight end, Frank. Joey Browner had the coverage. And the Vikings have forced San Francisco to punt again. Well, definitely the advantage uh, as far as the quarterbacks go is to Wade Wilson when he gets out of the pocket. He's more inclined to tuck his tuck it under his arm and take off. Joe Montana will buy time and is probably the best in the game at doing it to try and find an open receiver. That time he couldn't quite get the ball to Frank. So Max Runniger backs up to his 37 yard line. Anthony Carter who became the Vikings punt returner last week and became it very successfully with an 84-yard touchdown run. Handles it from the 10 and gets to the 20-yard line. That's a good job by Harry Sidney getting down and just slowing Anthony Carter up a little bit to allow his teammates to come in and make the play. Chuck Thomas with the tackle. There you go. San Francisco was and is the NFL's best. They were ranked number one in total offense, rushing, scoring, defense, defense, uh, pass defense, total first downs, point differentials. I think Burns and company threw that all out the window. Well, you know, they coaches <laughs> like to say statistics don't mean anything. There's only one statistic that matters, and that's what goes up on that scoreboard. And a long way to go on this one, but the Vikings are dominating 20 to 3. 6.06 to go, first half. Alfred Anderson. Good defensive coverage there by the 49ers, plastering them at the line of scrimmage. Pete Kugler led the charge. Jim Fonhorst right behind him. I think the Vikings are kidding themselves a little bit if they think they're going to be able to successfully run the football like they did down the throat in New Orleans last week. I can't see that happen. They, they ran the ball down inside the 20, had to settle for a field goal before the big interception. Now they've come out and tried to run it again. If they're going to move the football against San Francisco, it's going to have to be in the air. They have to be careful not to turn the ball over down here either and give the 49ers new life. Second and 10. Wilson almost picked off, intended for the tight end, Jordan. And it was Jeff Fuller. Fuller had a lot of regard for Steve Jordan and chatting with Fuller at the San Francisco practice the other day. He said, this is my responsibility. This guy is tough to stop. There he comes, he's gonna come down, make a move, and you're gonna see a play. The ball's gonna be there, and so is Jeff Fuller. There goes Jordan, there's Fuller, number 49. Certainly now, Jordan works back. Fuller just cuts in front, just does get that left hand in. Third down for Minnesota. Screen, Allen Rice. Oh, what a hit. At the 24-yard line, Ronnie Lott exploded into Rice. But Ronnie Lott may have injured himself with that tremendous crash. What a collision here, Joe. Ronnie Lott, I talked to him over the last couple of weeks. I've had a chance to visit with him, and he said, he wants to be, he'd love to be a strong safety so that he could get up and hit people just like Jeff Fuller does. Jeff Fuller said, fine, go ahead. Well, there you see, he just, he loves to just flat hit people. There he is, just, I'm sure he's just dinged a little bit. The sounds of football. Twack, it's called a twack. Tremendous crash, and Lott still getting attention down there. Meanwhile, it brings up a fourth down. Now, what they're asking him is they're asking him, where are, first of all, who are you? Secondly, where are you? Thirdly, how many fingers do I have? And they you say, which hand? I mean, it, you know, they're hoping to try and get his head cleared a little bit. Like, where are we? Say, Candlestick Park, good guess. Now, here's another one for you, okay? What's your name? Ronnie. 
<laughs> well, that happened to White Clark one time in Green Bay. We're glad to see Lott on his feet. And he had the wrong ballpark. He thought he was in <laughs> Candlestick. The game was in Green Bay. Nice try, Dwight. Well, we're happy to see Ronnie Lott on his feet. And hopefully he'll get back in for the 49ers. Dana McLemore back to receive the punt from Bucky Scribner. 20 to 3, Minnesota. If you've just tuned in, that is the score, folks. 11 point underdogs. I think they're going to go after this. They tried. McLemore from his 42 to the 48 yard line, tackled by Rick Finney. A 32 yard punt, pretty good field position for the 49ers who need to make something happen here with 4.34 left in the first half. That's Todd Shell, number 90, trying to help him figure out what's going on. There you see the way the game has gone. Nelson kicks a 21 yard field goal to get the Vikings up. Wershing comes back with a 43 yarder, makes it 3 3. Wilson hits Carl Hilton with a seven yard touchdown pass and then Nelson follows with another field goal and then you get the pickoff by Reggie Rutland running for the end zone. On first down Montana away from the rush. Driven out at the 49 yard line of Minnesota by Studwell and Browner. And there you see what the last score was which takes us to a score now. Minnesota 20, San Francisco 3, a 45-yard return by Reggie Rutland. Rutland plays in the nickel and dime packages for the Minnesota Vikings, and he came up big there. Came up with a big dollar, not a nickel or a dime on that one. <laughs> Cleveland over Indianapolis, 38-21 in the AFC Divisional Playoff earlier today. They'll meet the winner now, the Browns will, of the Houston Denver game tomorrow. Second down, about eight. Montana gets lots of time going deep for Rice. Incomplete. Isaac Holt had good coverage on him. And Rice accelerated there at the end trying to somehow steal the ball. Well, that's the one thing. See, you see the distance between Rice and Holt. Rice, number 80. Now, look at him close that gap. And he just tries to go up and get one hand on the ball. Give Isaac Holt a lot of credit. Now, Joe Montana thinks he's got the ball there. He says, oh, jeez. You realize Rice has not caught a pass in this football game so far. 3.43 remaining first half. Their most important and dangerous weapon has been shut out. Sometimes that can work against you because you try and force it to him. They're going to have to settle in and just get a tempo. Third down. Sack. The aroused Vikings defense gets their first sack of the day. Chris Dolman. And his personal duel with Bubba Paris comes up with a sack. Well, this is what this is the problem all day. There's Bubba Paris. There's Chris Dolman. He's going to take him up and then come inside of him. Now, Bubba's been expecting him to take the hard outside, I'm sure. Now, Dolman, see how he took that one step? Now he just blows right through Jesse Sapolu and Bubba Paris. Montana holding on to the football. That's the one thing that Bill Walsh also said. We can't have our quarterbacks hold the ball long. And they did. 49ers will have to punt. You saw Ronnie Lott, and it's questionable whether he'll return. Carter trying to find running room. It's out near the 20-yard line and hit there by Tom Holmo, a 46-yard punt. Just to uh, further report on Ronnie Lott, it was a blow to the head and that huge collision. And uh, we're not sure whether he'll be able to get back in here. You know, Ronnie will say, I want to play. Oh, yeah. Well, as long as he knows where he is, he'll get him back. There you go. San Francisco, they have, have not scored a TD since Super Bowl 20. Was it 19? Excuse me. I can't <laughs> read X. Super Bowl 19, 1985. <laughs> I never liked those Roman numerals either. That was a long time ago. <laughs> those Roman numerals are all Greek to me, too. First down on the 20 yard line. Every time I see X's and O's, it's got to be the playbook. <laughs> Wilson couldn't find a man open and gets only about a yard as Tim McKire came up quickly to make the defensive play. Minnesota can't get too conservative right here. They, they've got to continue to try and stay in their game plan and, and move the ball down the field the way they have the first half. Put it up in the air, dump it out to Darren Nelson, try and get the ball in the hands of Anthony Carter, and then the most important thing for them is, in passing situations, let Wade Wilson run with the football. Bob Schnelker 
devised the offensive game plan, which has had two impressive drives that ended in field goals. They did get the touchdown to Hilton. Wilson, sideline or incomplete on the timing play intended for Leo Lewis and a flag down in the backfield after the ball was thrown and a holding call signaled against the Vikings. That's one of those plays where the quarterback takes seven steps, the wide receiver goes out and runs some, and then the quarterback's supposed to fire it. That time Wilson was under pressure. Holding, 63 offense, penalty refused, third down. Kirk Laudermilk is first holding penalty. Here's one of those where the ball comes out. Hello, surprise, I'm here. Whoa. <laughs> it was a bird, a plane, what just went by me? That was a football is what it was. It'll be third down. Well, Loudermilk might have been expected to have a holding penalty before now against the tough Michael Carter over his nose. But that's the first of the day. It leaves him third down. Wilson got the ball off to Nelson who drops it. Minnesota will have to punt. Wilson scrambling around back there. Looked like he was just trying to find a place to escape. Suddenly saw Darren Nelson, but it's incomplete. Well, as this time, what you're going to see, that's Fagan right there. Everybody's going to rush. They're going to bring the blitz in. That's Shell, and here comes Fuller. They're going to put some pressure on Wilson, and they want to keep him in here. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to see Fagan. He, as soon as he gets blocked, now he's going to stop and say, okay, that's sort of like a spy. I'm going to keep an eye on Wilson and not allow him to run like he did for first down. And the 49ers shut down Minnesota. Scribner will hit it from the 12-yard line. It's down at about the 48 in San Francisco. Oh. Well, let's see. Well, that's where they first touched it, which is what the 49ers are saying. Oh, it'll go back to the 40. Yeah, well, it looked like one official was going to give it to him at the 40. The crowd got a little exercise. Yeah, they, they're, anything that happens out there, they've got <laughs> under scrutiny today. Just a 29-yard punt. San Francisco certainly can't complain about the fact that they've not had good field position. Except for those first two kickoffs. That, that's, but other than that, they've been the other side of the 35-yard line. Yes, they have. We've reached the two-minute warning. Some of you looking in might be stunned to see that score. The underdog Vikings, 20 to three, two minutes to play in the first half. Tim Ryan and Joe Theismann here. Roger Craig on first down gets three yards to the 47 yard line. Dolman and Brown are on the stop. Here's a little bit of a switch. San Francisco is gonna go right to the line of scrimmage with no huddle. They don't want Minnesota to make any adjustments or substitutions. Three receivers out to the left. Montana goes to the short man, Craig out of the backfield. And Roger Craig with a first down. Harris forced him out, but he made a beautiful move around Wyman Henderson, number 24, for a 15-yard gain. Yeah. You know, Roger Craig's caught 63 balls this year. He's one, you know, he led the receivers as far as running backs go in the National Football League. And he just has, he's the kind of guy that they've got to get the ball to. Jerry Rice and Roger Craig for the 49ers are two people that have to get their hands on the football. Craig has made five catches here in this first half. Montana will run it. First down to the 18 yard line and Montana in the hurry up again. See, there he is, he's signaling to everybody, get back in the same formation, get to the line of scrimmage. This is, this is a hurry up offense when you need it. Montana. Incomplete for Jerry Rice. Rice complaining about interference, but no flag forthcoming. Well, there's Rice at the top of your screen. He's just going to go down, run the post on Isaac Holt. He's giving him a lot of room. Now there's the hole. The ball's just down low. Went right through, just sort of snuck through his fingers. Can't quite tell whether he got hit from behind or not. Did not appear that there was interference on that play. Second down and 10 at the 20 yard line, 113 to go first half. Rice to the five, first catch of the afternoon. First and goal, San Francisco. Jerry Rice gonna go down, flash 80 and just run an out pattern on Isaac Colt. You see down the bottom of your screen, number 85, Mike Wilson will clear. Now he just turns Holt around. Holt had outside position. 
defensive coaches will say, don't let the man outside of you. And that time, Jerry Rice was able to. Looked like Holt thought he might have been going to the post. This is a situation where you may see those quick posts again from us from San Francisco's wide receivers. Play action, and it is buried by Studwell. Second sack. Takes the 49ers back out to the 14. And San Francisco realizes they only have one timeout left, so they can't afford to waste it. Montana for Rathman. David Howard on the tackle at the nine yard line. Bubba Paris blocked Chris Dolman all the way back to the 40 yard line. And San Francisco uses their last timeout. 49 seconds remaining in the first half. The 49ers almost desperately trying to get into that end zone. They trail 20 to three. 49 seconds remain here in the first half. The drizzle that has been with us now for all of the second quarter continues to fall here in Candlestick Park. You know, I'm asking myself, if I'm the 49ers and I'm down by 17 points, I've got third down and goal from the uh, eight yard line, approximately whatever, eight, eight, nine yard line. Do I use two plays to try and get a touchdown and close the gap? Or if I don't make it on third down, do I go for the field goal? I think you gotta go for points, so I would expect them to kick it if they don't make it on this play. Play action to Rathman. Montana throws it incomplete, intended for Craig. John Harris may have gotten a hand on that. And Montana was very close to the line of scrimmage when he threw the football. And Joe Montana also was caught in the middle of, do I run, do I not? Here he is scrambling. There's Craig right there. He's just going to try and work for him. And oddly enough, you know, Montana makes a decision here. Now, do I run or do I not run? No, I can throw the ball. Wait a second. Well, he got it there. Just flicked off his fingers. Yes, in the replay, it appeared it went off the fingers of Craig. That's one of the toughest decisions for a quarterback to make because you have no field to work with. So everything is a little flick here and a flick there. Wershing from the 16-yard line. No good. A 26-yard attempt missed by Ray Wershing. Symbolic of what's happened to the 49ers here in the first half. Coach Walsh can't believe it. Nor can Ray Wershing. It's a good hold. There's Ray Wershing. He says, oh, no. You think that's bad? There's Coach Walsh. He's watching. Forty seconds Boy. still to play. And now Jerry Burns with that burst of enthusiasm. Just the way he landed. <laughs> As the Vikings will wind it down here and happily take this surprising lead into the locker room. What does this remind you of last week? Just a little bit. Minnesota coming in the underdogs, talking to him on the sidelines. The guy said, hey, we don't have anything to worry about. We have no pressure on us whatsoever. We've, you know, we've gone from New Orleans to Minnesota, Minnesota to Tucson, Tucson to San Francisco. We can just relax, go out on the field. All the pressure's on San Francisco. Well, they're having a lot of fun so far, but it is only half time. Tim Ryan and Joe Theismann back here at Candlestick Park, where a steady drizzle has maintained itself since about the beginning of the second quarter. Minnesota with a 20 to 3 lead and you can see that they have dominated play in every category 61 yards rushing not quite up to the standard they've set the last several games that put them over the 200 plus for a full game rushing but they're, they pass for 155 yards and the turnover for the touchdown the interception return by Reggie Rutland burying the 49ers in the first half and also the 49ers only rushing for 39 yards in that first half which means they are not controlling the tempo of this game. Rathman from the 10. Out to the 20 yard line. San Francisco to our right in red. Minnesota to our left in white. Joe Montana has had some difficulty getting going today. Well, here you see, you know, Jerry Rice is their big play guy. From 10 yards and under, he's completed 7 of 10 passes for 31 yards. 
from 10 to 20 yards. He's completed two of five for 33. And then he really starts to have a problem. 0 for two from 21 to 30, one for two from 31 to 40, and 0 for two for over 40 yards. Now, he's one for six in that area where they really want to try and get Jerry Rice the big plays. First down, 49ers. Play action and a sack. Dolman drops Montana at the 14-yard line. Third sack of the day by Minnesota. The Vikings had six last week against the Saints. Well, Chris Dolman said that, uh, you know, Keith Millard said Chris Dolman talked a lot. He's just going to flat, not buy any fakes. Boom, he's going to the backfield. That's Bubba Paris, number 77. It has to block him. There's a big gap in there. So there you see Jesse Sapolo doesn't give him the help he needs. You know, the defensive linemen of the Minnesota Vikings are told, you penetrate two yards, don't worry about the run, just get up the field and be a pass rusher. All four of these guys are pass rushers. That's the guy who tells him, you just saw there, Floyd Peters, screen to Cray. Two blockers in front of him. He does a good individual job as the Vikings played it rather well, but Craig managed to squirt through and pick up about seven yards. It'll leave a third down and about 10. San Francisco, really a key in this game so far has been San Francisco's inability to get any yardage on first down. That has been the key for Minnesota. They have been able to control the line of scrimmage and pick up four, five, six yards and more on first and 10. And uh, what it is, is is Minnesota's defense is dictating the play of the game to San Francisco's offense. Three wide receivers in on third and 11 it is for San Francisco. They play action this fake to Craig and then off to Rathman incomplete. So San Francisco will have to punt it for the first time today. They hear some boos from the hometown supporters who are unhappy at the way this game has gone for San Francisco today. There you see the numbers for the quarterbacks. Wade Wilson having a good day, 11 for 21, 155 yards, one TD, no interceptions. Montana 11 for 23 with that one interception. Of course, the interception was run back for a touchdown. Leo Lewis returning this punt for the Vikings. He's their normal return man. Last week displaced by Anthony Carter and a nice piece of strategy by Coach Burns because as it turned out, he returned one for 84 yards in a big play in that game. And you sort of say to yourself, okay, why does Coach Burns make a decision to go back to Leo Lewis? It's obvious to him as it is to us that the 49ers are not going to allow their return guys to try and get some place to run. So he may as well put back the guy who's handled more balls. That way you're pretty well sure he's going to catch it. Vikings have a first down at their own 38. Three receivers lined up on the right side. An unusual formation for Minnesota. Now Carl Hilton goes in motion. Picked off by Fuller. He will score. Touchdown. Forty-eight yards for number forty-nine. Minnesota showed them a new look, but Fuller came up with the ball. Well, here you're going to see Wade Wilson's going to go back in the pocket. Now he's a little bit late with the throw. He's looking all the way out, way out to the right side of the screen. Carl Hilton, now he, Jeff Fuller bobbles the ball a little bit, just cuts up in front of him and takes this one all the way home. Little giveaway, takeaway. Reggie Rutland picked it off for Minnesota. Jeff Fuller picks it off for San Francisco. Wershing has the point after. So the 49ers who needed to make something happen early here in the second half have done so. 20 to 10, Vikings lead. This is Carl Hilton. He's going to go in motion out here. Fuller's going to widen, but Fuller gets right to there, and then he's going to go. Well, they've kicked the ball off, as you can see. We'll show you that in a moment. There's Alan Rice returning it to the 32-yard line for Minnesota on a short kickoff from Worshing. Well, let's go back and see that again, Joe. All right, I'll show you it again. This is Carl Hilton going in motion. Now, Jeff Fuller's going to widen, but he's going to sit down. And Wade Wilson looks at him all the way. As soon as the ball is thrown, he's going to have to try and go make the tackle. Now, there you see Fuller widen. Minnesota gets what they want. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage. But now Fuller just sits down, closes the cushion, picks it off, and now it's a foot race. Jeff Fuller's first interception of the season and first NFL touchdown. 
A man who said he had to track Nelson today picked up the backup tight end, Carl Hilton, wound up with a score. Wilson, nice catch by Carter, takes a tremendous shot but holds on for a Viking first down to the 47-yard line of the Vikings. Oh, this is, this is just a big-time play by a big-time receiver. Wade Wilson's going to move to the upper left of your screen with a little bit of a play-action pass. Now, Anthony Carter's just going to drag himself across the middle. You see, he's not really running a pattern. He's just clearing. You see the tight end come across. He reaches back and makes a play. Von Horst made the initial hit, and it was Ronnie Lott who came storming in there. If you were wondering about the condition of his head, well, he used it again right there. Word is Greg Cook will not return for Minnesota. Reverse to Carter. He's got some running room. Wilson blocking for him. All the way down to the 22-yard line. Forced out by Don Griffin. And Wade Wilson with a pretty good block. Well, you know, those quarterbacks, they're tough cookies. Here it is. It's just from the, you'll see Carter come right around and watch the pursuit of the San Francisco entire defense go to the top right of the screen. It's the pitch. Now look at the pursuit. See everybody start to go? Now Wade Wilson turns around, and he does a good thing. He doesn't look back. He's not going to block anybody. Now he just throws his body down and allows Carter to pick up an additional 20 yards. First down, Minnesota at San Francisco's 22. Anderson, not much. Kevin Fagan, number 75, the first year man from Miami on the tackle. Well, the 49ers got themselves back into this football game, trailing 20 to three at halftime. Wershing had missed a 26 yard field goal as the half came to a close, but Fuller's interception, a 48 yard return, has brought them back 20 to 10. 11.54 to go in the third quarter here at Candlestick Park. And down in this part of the field, we've talked about Minnesota's problems getting the ball in the end zone. What San Francisco has to be most concerned with is that man right there. Not necessarily his passing, but his running ability. Second and a long nine. Wilson finds an open man, Allen Rice. And Rice has a first down inside the 10. Tom Homo, number 46, made the tackle. Again, the credit, Wade Wilson in the shotgun. Watch the blocking up front. You're, he's going to have people going all over, and the ball's going to come right out of there for the completion. He does a good job of staying in the pocket, looks to the left, sets, 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 makes the throw. Allen Rice makes the reception, picks up the first down. I really believe San Francisco felt like they could get to him that time, so they gave that receiver a little more cushion. The Vikings have their own Rice, and so far today, he's done more than Jerry of San Francisco. Allen Rice again, blasting to the five-yard line. Ricky Ellison made the tackle, number 50, coming off injured reserve with an arm injury, getting back into action a couple of weeks ago. There you go, you want to play linebacker? You make the tackle. No, I don't. All right, well then here. <laughs> Watch this, wham, wham. Actually be a ball carrier. Let's those people come flying in from all over. It'll be second and goal, Minnesota. This is the toughest real estate in all of California right now, right here. And it has been for them, and Wilson didn't like what he saw, so they take a timeout. Now, unlike the timeout we saw Montana take early in this ball game, this is a good one. I think it's a smart decision by him. If they get it in the end zone, his team goes up 27 to 10. If they make some kind of mistake, gives a big breathe, of, uh, sigh of relief for the uh, for the uh, 49er defense. So it's a it's a good decision, made it a good time. See Tommy Kramer there discussing it with Jerry Burns. See this group here. This is what we're talking about as far as platoon football. These guys are coming off. These guys are going on, and that's what the confusion is. Is you just don't get the personnel that you're used to. There go the four substitutions: Stover. Haley, Roberts goes on, Clyde Glover goes on, now Wade Wilson comes back to the huddle to a whole new group of faces. That's what's called their nickel package. The nickel package is the second down and long yardage pass rushing specialist. And now the 49ers changing again, That's send right. four new players on the field, including two linebackers. It's like a giant chess game. You know, when you, you think that the other guy's gonna do something, you do something else, except that the uh, knights and the pawns and the king and queen are a lot of big people. There's Tom Kramer. Second and goal from the five. 
One setback, Anderson. Wilson lofting for Hilton incomplete. Third and goal. Well, what it looks like Minnesota has done is everybody's talking about Steve Jordan's going to the Pro Bowl, Anthony Carter's going to the Pro Bowl, Allen Rice last week threw a touchdown pass to Anthony Carter. But in this game, Minnesota seems to have said, okay, we get inside that red area down around the goal line. Carl Hilton, you're our man. We're going to use the other guys as decoys, but we're going to set a play specifically for you. That time it was good coverage by San Francisco. Three times they've thrown to Carl Hilton. Once he dropped it, once he caught it for a score, and that one overthrown. Corner. Touchdown. Hassan Jones. So the Vikings rebound from the interception by Fuller and march right down the field to score again. Well, you're going to see, here it is. What happens is Griffin has got his back to the ball, and as Hassan Jones goes, all right, he goes up the field. Now, Griffin never looks back. Cardinals sin by a defensive back. He's just trying to face guard him and shield him and strip the ball away. There you go. There's Bob Schnucker. He's looking, looking at Schnucker to right. Kramer? It's like the coach expects it and the players get excited. <laughs> Coaches are always, you know, they stone faces. They don't ever make any emotional moves. Chuck Nelson. Now Wade Wilson got the start today. He has delivered the goods. 68 yards and seven plays. You're looking at Hassan Jones, who caught one on his back against New Orleans last week on that final play of the half. And today, he makes another fine catch. The first touchdown pass thrown over Don Griffin all season long. 27 to 10 lead. The significance of that is very, very deep indeed because the 49ers had just gotten themselves quickly back into the game to start the second half, but the Vikings rebound with one of their own. Nelson's kickoff. Deep to the end zone, Harry Sidney. Sidney fires it over. Good catch over there. John Taylor out to the 40-yard line. Uh, Taylor slipped down on that greasy turf and made a fine catch of that long lateral pass from Harry Sidney. And the one thing people have to realize is Harry Sidney was a wishbone quarterback. Now you're going to see him start up the field, make sure John Taylor's going to be behind him. He's going to throw the ball over, and Taylor's going to head on up the field. He does an excellent job of selling the run. Now he just plants, turns, makes the throw. It is a lateral. And again, who's the guy out there to make the play? Joey Browner from Minnesota. Desperate men take desperate measures. On first down, Montana incomplete. Joey, you have to question that, that play on the kickoff. I mean, all kinds of bad things could have happened there. You're down 27 to 10. There's 9.57 remaining in the third quarter. I have to question a play like that. That's an awfully high-risk play. I'll tell you what you do. I don't agree with you on that. I think what happens is you've got it. You allow him to take a look at it. You're going to see Sidney run on up. This is a reverse angle. Watch the flow of the entire team coming down Minnesota's team. Now, he sees what's happening. He knows whether somebody's fallen out over where John Taylor is, and he makes a good decision. you got to let the athletes make decisions. Well, that's a live ball out there if he misses it. Rathman to the 48-yard line. First down, 49ers. And you know what really looms big for the 49ers was that missed field goal at the end of the half. Instead of being down 17 points at this juncture, they would only be down two touchdowns. Now it's going to take three scores for them to get back even or, or if they three score touchdowns to get ahead. And Floyd Peters, who we just saw in that shot, is not inclined to let his defense want to do that. 12-yard gain for Tom Rathman. The action again from Montana. Throwing it in the middle, nearly picked off. Carl Lee had a much better shot at it than the intended receiver, Mike Wilson. This is a team very much out of rhythm today, the 49ers. Play action fake by Joe Montana, moving to the right. Now you see Wilson coming to the left part of your screen, just passing by the official. Now Montana makes a throw that he really shouldn't make. Mike Wilson was not open. It's like San Francisco expects Minnesota to be in a certain thing, but they're not cooperating in being in it. Second and 
10. Loss of a yard. Montana could not get back to the line of scrimmage. A lot of credit to that secondary of the Vikings. Montana has no place to throw the ball. And again, the defensive front four felt like it's on their shoulders. If the Vikings are going to advance in the playoffs, it's going to be because of Dolman, because of Millard, because of Thomas, and because of Martin. They are accepting the challenge of going out and controlling the line of scrimmage. Millard and Thomas making the tackle on that sack. Third down. Short drop for Montana. Pumps once, now goes off to Rice. And Rice held to a six-yard gain by Carl Lee. I San think, Francisco will have to punt. I don't think so. I think you might have to go for it here. I don't think you're going to punt. Well, well, the punting unit's coming on. Yeah, but I think he may, he, I'll tell you, in the back of his mind, he was thinking, well, you know, what is the distance? I think if it was five or less, he probably would have gone for it on fourth down. Being that it's six, he's going to try and kick him away. There are points in a game that mean a lot. This is one. It's up to San Francisco's defense to hold Minnesota if they're going to have a possible chance to try and move on and score some points and get back in this game. Leo Lewis awaiting Runniger's punt, standing at the 10-yard line of Minnesota. Fair catch signal. What about the 12-yard line? Byron Nelson. At close to the 15-yard line, Todd Shell made the tackle. Shell replacing the injured Keena Turner, and the third-year man from BYU has done a solid job. And a good report on Keena's knee surgery was done last Saturday, and uh, medical staff happy with that. And Keena expecting to come back at full strength next season. He was having a great year when he got hurt. Are you sure? And you know, Minnesota can't be, uh, there's seven and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Minnesota can't sit on the ball. They, they won't be able to run it. They haven't been able to run it all day. And, uh, you know, you can't expect to try and take time off the clock just keeping it on the ground. Wilson, nobody there. And Michael Waller had a free shot for the sack. First of the day by the 49ers. Well, far, you'll see it right here. He's just going to come flying right through the hole. It's a waggle. Lewis goes, waggle, it's, it, what a waggle means is the backs go one way, the quarterback goes another. Now there comes Michael Walter, right up the, right up the shoot. Wade Wilson doing the right thing, peeling it and meeting it. Steve Young on the sidelines for the 49ers warming up. He's in the bullpen. Wilson gets it off, intended for Carter. Can't get to the ball. A lot of credit to Jeff Fuller to put a lot of pressure on Wade Wilson. He did not have a chance to be able to set the, the ball where it should be for the wide receiver. Watch Carter get his feet tangled up with Griffin as he tried to adjust to the ball turning inside. Well, here again, it's that corner move, a little post move inside and back out. Griffin slips a little bit, and now the ball had to be thrown so early that he couldn't adjust to it. So the Vikings will have to punt from the end zone. McLemore waiting for it at the 47. We're going to see a new quarterback for the 49ers on this series. Scribner got it away. McLemore struggles to the 35-yard line. San Francisco in good position here. Ray Berry made the tackle. And it will be Steve Young when play resumes here at Candlestick Park. 6.29 to go, third period. Minnesota, 27 to 10. Joe, a rare occurrence where you see Joe Montana lifted from a game. Well, I think the reason why they lifted him is this statistic right here. Steve Young is a better runner, and in these field conditions, they may have to have him scramble. Play action pass, and wide open Roger Craig inside the five. This is, again, the play action pass. You'll see him fake into the line of scrimmage and run Roger Craig on a little corner pattern. Roger Craig's going to come out of here. You run the fake, the fake to uh, Rathman, and you get in behind the linebackers. That time, Roger Craig met the challenge of Jesse Solomon and beat him up the field. Now, also remember, Young has been playing the last few weeks. Montana only played the second half of that L.A. game. 
Roger Craig left the field limping and is being attended on the 49er bench. Cribs in to replace him. Cribs with the ball. Gets away from one tackler and another, but is driven back near the 15-yard line by Walker Lee Ashley. Doug Martin had him in his grasp, but a good effort by Cribs to break loose. You'll see here Rathman trying to lead along and, and move this way. Now Cribs just tries to get outside, but that whole secondary or the defensive line of the Vikings with a late shift, you saw what happened. Doug Martin shifted real late down inside that screwed up the entire blocking of the right side of the 49er offense. That's a very frustrated quarterback right there. So it is second and goal from the 10 yard line. Play action, Young rolling, he'll run it. Touchdown! Flag on the play. Against San Francisco. It's gonna be holding. On number 61 from about the two or three yard line. We'll repeat the down. Jesse Sapolo charged with holding. The touchdown wiped out. Steve Young comes on the field, hits a wide open Roger Craig on his first play, and then runs it in, only to have it called back. This was not a pass at all. This was a run all the way. You'll see the holding, number 61, right there. He's going to just hang on. Hang on to Carl Lee. Get that left arm. That's just, that hurts you so bad. All he has to do is put his big body in front of him, and he's at the one yard line. Young can fly in if he has to. There he is, lower left part of your screen. He gets that left arm on the chest and just hangs on and creates a hole. Bad decision. The only thing good about it is that you're penalized from the spot of the infraction. So it isn't tacked on, and they're back at the 20. They're only at the 12-yard line. The 49ers trailing 27 to 10. Give Joe Montana the hook. Steve Young drives him downfield. Under pressure. Gets it to Cribs. Back to the five-yard line. Jesse Solomon ties him up. It'll be third and goal from the five. 49ers desperately need a score here. You know, we've been talking about Minnesota's inability to get the ball into the end zone. But San Francisco this afternoon has really struggled. We saw them at the end of the half have to try for a field goal try. They missed it. Here they are knocking on the door again. Penalty to set them back. Now they're down to the five. This is a very big play for them. Very big series. Roger Craig having a watch from the sidelines after hurting his knee on the catch. And the pass from Steve Young. Rathman hustles into the lineup at the last second for the 49ers. Young, touchdown. Steve Young, despite some confusion on the play by the 49ers, they're a man short when it began. Well, what happens again, you're gonna see the backs are gonna go that way, the line's gonna react, Minnesota's just firing people all over the place, and Steve Young just legs it into the end zone. There you see the fake, Dolman gets just that one step inside, Young flags the ball and just dives into the corner. They were with a point after. Got it. 35 yards and five plays for the 49ers. The tension clearly on the face of Welch and Montana as Young takes it in and the 49ers are back in it. 49ers kick it off after Steve Young's touchdown and Darren Nelson from the goal line. Nelson found some running room out to the 35-yard line of Minnesota, met there by Dana McLemore, and Steve Young coming in to replace Joe Montana in the third quarter here, moved the 49ers 35 yards in five plays, actually scored twice. Took it in once, was called back for a holding penalty to Sapolu, and then he ran it in again. Joe Jump. Montana watching from the sidelines, and. No doubt uh, wishes that he'd been able to stay in there. He left the game 12 of 26, 109 yards, but obviously Bill Walsh feeling it was time to make a change. 
It paid off almost immediately. Wilson pumps once. It is caught. Is it inbounds? Yes, Anthony Carter over Tim McKire with a sensational catch. Well, we've seen Anthony Carter constantly get up in the air. Here he is. It's a play action fake. He's going to go down, run the post. You'll see him go about five yards into the post. Now, bang, get up the field. McKire does an excellent job. He looks back and does find the ball, except Anthony Carter, with that great leaping ability, manages to go up and make the play. Well, that is sensational. And Anthony Carter is jogged off the field, dragging his left arm a little bit. I think he just got dinged a little. Eight catches, 181 yards on the day for the man they call AC. I believe they're gonna review this one because you'll see his left foot comes down in bounds, but where does that right foot hit? There's the left foot. Now, is that right foot out of bounds? If the right foot landed out of bounds, that is not a legal catch. Well, he could have been forced out by McKire, however, on the coverage. Got his foot down. Well, it's one of those things we'll debate. There it is. You'll see him come down now. His left foot will hit. There goes the left foot. Now, where does that right one that's sticking out in the air come down? Can't see it in that angle. His body's blocking that one. Well, he's also had, of course, he had already had the contact with McKire trying to break up the play. Jack, Jack Reeder, Reeder up yeah. there is the replay Taking official. Taking a look at it. I asked him about the pressures of being on the field or being up in the booth. He says, being up in the booth, it's a lot tougher because down on the field, you can confer. Up in the booth, you got to make a decision all by yourself. This is going to be the angle we'll probably use. There's the left foot coming down. After a review of this replay, right foot the inbound. Call stands. A complete catch. It's a good call. You can see that right foot just barely come down inbound. Jerry Burns says, I don't even know why they bother to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> he has got to be one of the, the greatest looking coaches on the sideline. Vikings ball at the 25 yard line of San Francisco. Darren Nelson got a couple sandwiched by Kevin Fagan and bored out there on the linebacker shell. There you see the two big guns, Anthony Carter and Jerry Rice. You'll see their numbers and what they've done this afternoon. Anthony Carter having a great day. Eight catches, 181 yards. It's a Viking playoff record. And Rice only two catches for 20 yards this afternoon. And it was Carter who downplayed the matchup between Rice and himself. He said, I'm just going to go play my own game. Let the media do that. Darren Nelson. Good reaction by the 49ers. Held him to a gain of about a yard. Michael Carter, the nose man on the tackle. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. And the 49ers replacing Joe Montana struck quickly with Steve Young, scoring from five yards out to make it 27 to 17. However, the Vikings have marched right back down the field and they're at the 22 of San Francisco now. Third down and seven. Jim Gustafson, number 80, reserve wide receiver, making a diving try. Fourth down. You don't think it's tough in the front. There's Michael Carter, number 95, right smack dab in the middle. Now, there you go, number 72 is going to push him. David Huffman, now they go back and forth. The referee's trying to play referee. Mark McCarter says, hey, you better be careful. Wind up getting a penalty there. From the 35-yard line, Chuck Nelson will attempt the 40-yarder. He's got it. Chuck Nelson. From 40 yards out, Chuck Nelson has widened the Viking lead, 30 to 17. Well, Joe, uh, 
Steve Young obviously made an instant difference. Have they got enough time left here now for him to be able to do the same kind of thing? Well, they do because they're only down by 13 points. If they can get two touchdowns, they can, you know, pull it out 31-30. That's what I start thinking about now if I'm the quarterback. I'm saying, okay, I can get two touchdowns. I think with Steve Young in the game, they do have an opportunity to score because he adds that other dimension, that running quarterback. That's what really hurt San Francisco was Minnesota's ability, Wade Wilson's, to run the football. So now you look at it from San Francisco's side, they have a guy in there who can make big plays when he seems like he's trapped in the pocket. Nelson will kick it off. Joe Cribbs on the near sideline from the 13th. The flag is down on the play as he is tripped up at the 25-yard line by Sam Ono, reserve linebacker number 53. The flag was upfield from the punt from the kickoff return. Holding number 53 during the run back. 10-yard penalty, then first down. That's Milt McCauley. They, they called on the holding penalty. Not very much fun when you get a chance to start out around the 30 and then all of a sudden you're back at your own 16. Steve Young comes out to commandeer the 49ers again. Talking to Steve before the game, he said, where do you keep that helmet? He said, I have a special place right under the bench, very near the center field stripe. I'm ready to get that hat on at any time. He's kind of smiling as, as though he was expecting. I probably won't get to use it, but here he is. Play action. Mike Wilson, close to a first down for San Francisco. And what, what having Steve Young in the game is gonna do for that offensive line of the 49ers, it's gonna give them a little bit of an advantage because Minnesota's defensive front guys just can't come teeing off now, expecting him to be six or seven yards right behind the center. The 49ers move him out a little bit, but also you're gonna see him try and contain him a little, and that will take away a little bit of the aggressiveness of that Minnesota front four trying to get to the quarterback. The irony of that, Joe, as they make the measurement, is that everybody concedes Montana to be the most dangerous quarterback in the, in the league, I guess with the exception of maybe John Elway, but he has the top rating, et cetera, and planning uh, against him is very difficult, and yet suddenly the run dimension of Young makes it more difficult for the pass rushing team. Well, it certainly does. You, you give that defense something else to worry about. The defensive backs can only cover receivers so long. If you get a quarterback out scrambling around, there's going to be holes in the defense to throw the ball. First down for San Francisco. Time winding down in this third quarter, and Young running again. <laughs> to the 31-yard line of Minnesota. 42-yard gain. This is exactly what I was talking about. From over here, you're going to see Dolman unblocked. Young's going to make the fake, and he's just going to run around him. Now, here, Dolman's been chasing Joe Montana. You see him come from the left side of the screen, number 56. All day long, he's gone for that six or seven yards. Now Young turns it on. He just points upfield. Mike Wilson doing an excellent job of just shading Carl Lee. And there you see him get knocked out of bounds. David Howard just getting a hand on him. First down at the 31 of the Vikings. Young wants to throw and gets the ball off as he is thrown out of bounds by Dolman. Real close to being in the grass. That time Steve Young just hanging on to it just a little bit, almost too long, but manages to get it off. Was your, I'll guarantee your heart gets pumping a little bit fast. There's Dolman, number 56 in pursuit. Now he's pressuring, he's looking downfield. Watch that big right palm. That could have been close to a face mask, but he does manage to get rid of it. And then he comes out the other side of his teammates. They put all that silky kind of stuff at the covering down there where you slide around on a day like today. So it leaves second and 10, San Francisco. One set back with Young. Thanks to Craig for Rice out of bounds. 
That time he just made a decision to throw it away. So the other thing it does is you got to remember this guy just ran 42 yards. <laughs> He's he, puffing. Yeah, you get a chance to catch your breath. Two things are, are, are working against you physically. Number one, you ran 42 yards. Secondly, by him going in a, in a game like this, his adrenaline has got to be so high and pumping so hard, he's got to be careful that it, it, it doesn't overtake him and make him fatigue. He's already outrushed the rest of the San Francisco running backs. Third and 10. That's good protection. Coverage is good downfield. Short man Frank cannot hold on. It'll be fourth down. I got to believe, you know, he, he punted last time. I got to believe he'll punt this time again and give his defense a chance to play some ball. You've got a full quarter left. You're only down by 14 points. Um, you give the ball up here on the 30-yard line and your defense is starting to play good ball, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, well, now he sent Worshing on. There was... Obviously, a lot of mulling going on down there. The kind of mulling Bill Walsh said he was doing when uh, some uh, alleged political party named him their pre presidential candidate. That's a timeout. They got a little bit of confusion going on there. Now, one point I want to make. The regular holder was Max Runniger, number four. The guy that was going to hold for him was not Max Runniger. It was number eight, the quarterback, Steve Young. You saw them get their guys out there, hardly stay in the huddle, get to the line of scrimmage as quickly as possible. I'm sure what they wanted to do, there was something called besides just a worshing kick. I was down on the field during pre-game pre warm-ups. He's going to have to kick a 49-yard, 48-yard field goal. I don't know if he can get the ball that far. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was something more than just a, a field goal attempt in mind by the, the San Francisco 49ers on that play. Well, there was some discussion at the sideline as we indicated as to what they were going to do. And the longest field goal of the season by Worshing was just 45 yards. And Young is still going to be involved here one way or the other. There, now, now Runniger's See, now up. that's the difference. OK, now I got to believe. Now, now I'm sort of, if I'm a defensive guy and a defensive coaches, I got to say to myself, all right, I believe Ray Worshing is going to try the field goal at this juncture with Max Runniger. Now, if Young was in there, I'd have to think differently. There he is in the ball game. So the ball will be spotted at just inside the 39-yard line. Take it one step further. Do you think by putting Runniger in, he figures, OK, Minnesota doesn't think they're going to run the fake and try and do it? I don't. I think he's going to kick it. A 48-yard attempt is well short, well short. And again, the Boo Birds come out at Candlestick. Now, they may be booing Worshing and or the call. But that brings us to the end of the third quarter with the score. The Minnesota Vikings, 27, 30, pardon me, and the 49ers, 17. <laughs> On first down, Alfred Anderson dropped for a loss. As soon as he caught the ball, he was buried inside the 30-yard line. Ronnie Lott made the tackle. We are just underway in the fourth quarter. Tim Ryan and Joe Theismann at Candlestick Park. So far, the Minnesota Vikings have dominated the favored 49ers. They lead 30 to 17. Steve Young replaced Joe Montana at quarterback in the third period. But the Vikings have maintained command. Wade Wilson has gone all the way at quarterback and he just connects with Anthony Carter. It'll leave third down and about a yard. Well, Anthony Carter has been the man that the Vikings have wanted to go to. There you see the, here's the situation. If you're Don Griffin, what do you do with him? You take a little bit inside away, but then you give him that outside break. He's such a great athlete. You just, you know, you catch the ball and you tackle. I and mean, that's about the only thing you can do. He's up almost close to 200 yards receiving the ball today. Been Mr. Everything for him. Run it on reverses, everything else. 191 yards on the day for Anthony Carter. And they're re-spotting the ball, which is going to shorten that third down distance they need to get a first down. After a review of instant replay, we missed the forward progress by a yard. It was replaced. 
Yeah, uh, you know, uh, come on. <laughs> well, okay, I guess they got the machine and want to use it. <laughs> can I say it? Well, it's third and about a half a yard now. Now, now Anthony Carter comes out of the game. See, that, that yard makes a big difference for a coach. Wait a second. Nope, now they sent him back in. Now they call timeout. Now, well, they got a lot of guys running around back there. See, there's a case. Let me show you. There's a case where technology has caused confusion for a team. Dropped the 30 seconds. There was an interruption of play. That's right. See, now, that's, now Gene Barth has done the right thing. Uh, once they stop the play, they've got to reset that clock and give them a 30 second opportunity to be able to make the call and their substitutions. Now here comes San Francisco with their short yardage group. Actually not short yardage, they had the short yardage in the game. Now they've got their regular third down unit in. Wilson dives for it and appears to have a first down for the Vikings. You call that a dive? Well, it wasn't much of a dive. <laughs> that was, that, wasn't, a belly that was not one of your Olive Walter Payton jobs <laughs> up and over. But it was effective. That's what counted. There's Dwight Clark and the great 49er receiver has indicated this will probably be his final season, although he's kept the door open a crack. He said he'll really make a final decision when it's all over, and I'm sure depending on what the 49ers do. Right now, they're fighting an uphill battle. And Tom Kramer, the guy, he told me last year he was going to be the comeback player of the year next year. Bothered by that pinch nerve almost the entire season. Wilson to Allen Rice. Flag is down behind the play as Rice Blake breaks loose and gets down near the 40-yard line of San Francisco. And not only that, there's a flag down in the backfield. Jeff Fuller came in, and I believe they're going to call Ruffing the quarterback. Defense. They tag 15 yards on the end of the run. Wow. A 19-yard gain and a 15-yard penalty. From the top of the screen, you're going to see Fuller come in and have a shot at, uh, at Wade Wilson. Now he throws the ball. Now he's got him. Now he should just let him. Now he throws him down. Well, now there's a conversation going on. And I'll guarantee you, they're not asking each other what it was like in Tucson or how the weather's been in San Francisco. <laughs> I think Wade. That, not a, that, was, that was a play of frustration by Jeff Fuller. Good job of Wade Wilson to draw the defense to him on the screen. And, uh, you know, Fuller now, he gives him an opportunity at another field goal by, by the additional 15 yards. Wade Wilson will take that play anytime he can get it. No damage done to him. And he's got a first down at the 24. Alfred Anderson gets two. Keith Kugler made the tackle for 67. There's the man who has been the biggest player in this game. Tom Fierce, 1950. Was the last 198 yards in a playoff reception. That was Los Angeles versus Chicago. Just seven yards away from that mark as Anthony Carter uh, coming in here in what uh, was painted as a matchup between Carter and Gary Rice. And it's been all Carter today. They've had the ball most of the day. And there you saw a shot of Chris Goldman. Total concentration. And getting a well-earned rest. Sack for the 35. Charles Haley. Second by San Francisco today. And they get back some of that penalty yardage. Well, that's just a big play because not only does it get back some of the penalty yardage, but it potentially puts them out of field goal range, and they still only remain 13 points behind. That's one of those times, and you know, you look back at this game, who knows what the outcome's going to be, but that could be one of the really big plays in this game. And I'm sure Bill Walsh hopes so, yeah. 12.46 to go, still a lot of time. Third down and 21 to go. Blitzing. Wilson completes it, but well short of the first down yardage. Darren Nelson got to the 30-yard line. Dropped there by Ronnie Lott. Well, they spotted at the 29, and it'll be fourth down. We saw Bill Walsh earlier, late in the third quarter earlier, um, be in this almost the exact same situation, send his field goal unit in to attempt a field goal. Now, the field is, is wet. It's heavy. The air is heavy. It's full of misty and fog. Uh, this is going to be a pretty good size shot. It'll be a 47-yard attempt by Chuck Nelson. Nelson's long of the year, a 51-yarder. He got it. Chuck Nelson.
Nelson from 46 yards away. And that ball just barely cleared the crossbar. But a big, big field goal for Chuck Nelson, 11.39 to go. Minnesota, 33, the 49ers, 17. 11.39 to play in the fourth quarter. The Vikings, 33 to 17, four Chuck Nelson field goals, including one from 46 yards away. Here's a young guy that has struggled much of this season, Joe, comes up big in the well, big not, game. Not only struggled, he was one for eight from outside of 40 yards going into this game. Now you look at him, he comes out, he's kicked four in the ball game, two of them have been over 40 yards, and you don't think he's excited about it? Look at that. Yeah! He must be a good mutter. He likes well, this I'll... kind of damp condition and heavy air out here at Candlestick on a drizzly day. Now he kicks a line drive kickoff that comes down at the 11, bobbled there. Joe Cribbs recovers and gets out to the 18, a flag down. And it may be against San Francisco. You know, last week, about everything that could go right went right for Minnesota against New Orleans. Today, holding 52 receiving team during the run back. 10 yard penalty and then a first down. Today it looks like they are repeating that kind of an afternoon. There's Cooper, number 52, a linebacker. You see him right in the middle of the screen. He's just going to hang on. You just can't do it. There he is, number 53. You just can't hold on to people. That's a little obvious. I mean, when, you, when you pull the jersey off, that becomes a little obvious. Well, they've had a couple like that, and they have had seven overall. They just won by the Vikings. Play action for Steve Young in difficulty. Scrambles out of there. And picks up the first down at the 21-yard line where Keith Millard came a long way back to make the tackle. Minnesota has got to score on this drive and this possession to get back into, I mean, excuse me, San Francisco is going to have to score on this drive in this possession if they're going to be able to save some kind of hope to win this football game. Young hurt himself on that play and is hobbling a little bit, looked over to the sideline, after that last play, you can see him unable to support all of his weight, apparently on his left foot. On the backfield, Rathman for another 49er first down. Chris Martin on the tackle. You know what you got to do as a quarterback in this situation, Tim, is you got to tell your receivers that if you get near the sidelines, you've got to try and buy me some time and get out of bounds. That time, Rathman could have saved about 25 seconds for his team by getting out of bounds. They're out to the 33 of San Francisco. Go, baby, by not go. getting out of bounds, he also puts a lot of pressure on Steve Young yeah. to get him in and out of the huddle in a hurry. Rathman, the running back. Vikings do not buy it, and a loose ball, Roger Craig. Roger Craig coughed it up. Now let's see whether he was downed. No, I'll tell you what, Steve Young gave him the ball. I don't think Roger Craig expected him to have the football. The question is me down first, no fumble. Me was down before he lost the ball. Well, Gene Barth says it very specifically. Vikings don't agree, naturally. There you see right there, there's going to be the ball. Now, does his knee go down? Young makes the handoff. Is the ball out or is his knee on the ground? Now his knee was on the ground. Good call by the referee. Keith Millard, better known as Mallard. Second down and 13. Good catch by Wilson as Young delivered that right on the money for another first down. I got to believe that San Francisco has got to go to a hurry up offense now. You got nine minutes, 15 seconds to go in the game. You either got to rock and roll and get them to the line of scrimmage or get them in and out of that huddle in a hurry. To the 48 yard line of Minnesota. There's the time remaining, regulation time. See, you're, you're going up against two opponents right now. The Vikings on the field and the clock ticking away. Young buys some time, now runs out of it, and he is dropped. Dolman got him after he picked up about 
two or three yards, he wouldn't have been able to throw the ball from there anyway. It was already over the line of scrimmage. You want to see some blocking. Young's going to go back in the pocket. Now, Keith Millard, number 75, you see him come running. Now, just peeling out is Harris Barton. Just flat cuts him in half. But that Dolman is just absolutely relentless in his pursuit of the quarterback. Under Bill Walsh, the 49ers 7-3 and three in playoff activity, unbeaten in their last five playoff games at home. In deep difficulty now. Young lets it all hang out. That's over everybody. Rice, intended receiver. And Rice complaining he was interfered with. No call forthcoming. Well, I think when the ball's over that far, you're not going to be able to do it. The 49ers have made an offensive change at center. Fred Quinlan is in at the offensive center instead of uh, Randy Cross. Excuse me, Fred Quillen. I stand corrected. Anyway, they've got a new center in the game. Well, the veteran suffered a concussion earlier in the season. They moved Cross into center and left him there. Quillen number 56. Robinson and Mays have come in defensively for the Vikings. Young for John Taylor, intercepted. Carl Lee picks it off for the Vikings at the 12-yard line of Minnesota. That is the first interception suffered by Steve Young this entire season. You're going to see John Taylor come down from the top of your screen. He's just going to break from left to right. He is wide open. This ball is just thrown very high and very poorly. Might have been just that second little stutter move that may have thrown Steve Young off. We don't know, but we do know that Carl Lee has wound up with the football. We also know that that has sent a large portion of the spectators here toward the exits. What a stunning finish this will be for the San Francisco 49ers. Should they lose this game, and it looks now like they will after a brilliant season. Seven point favorites coming into this game and being stunned by the Minnesota Vikings who backed into the playoffs. And resented people reminding them of that. Well, you know, you, you talk about long shots. Obviously, the Minnesota Vikings were a long shot to, to get past New Orleans and even a longer shot past San Francisco. They're 50 to 1 winning the Super Bowl. But you have to think of what's going on in the city of Minnesota. The Twins, by, by winning the World Series, beat the odds of 125 to 1. And uh, in talking to some of the Minnesota players, the entire city was so wrapped up with what the Twins had accomplished, the Vikings didn't really get their fans behind them until late in the game. Now I'll guarantee you they're going to have them standing in the streets. Second down, seven. <laughs> Alfred Anderson struggles out to the 20-yard line. I, I think the debate, even in... The mind of Jerry Burns about who his quarterback will be in the next game has been settled here today. Wilson, 19 of 33, 263 yards, two touchdowns. Has been solid, started, and will probably finish this game. And what really, really was the, his, the biggest asset was his ability to run the football. Came up with some key third down runs when it looked like he was trapped. And I think that totally created the problems for the 49ers all afternoon. He's down in two. Loss on the play. Back to the 16-yard line. Allen Rice driven back by Michael Carter. 6:24 remaining regulation time. The Minnesota Vikings jumped off to a 20-3 lead at halftime. Chuck Nelson has kicked four field goals. Wade Wilson, as we commented, has had an outstanding game. Jerry Burns telling us that this heavy air was one of the reasons why he went with him. Thinking the stronger arm could get the ball there. Well, he did get it there. McLemore back to receive the punt. He's out of bounds at the 49er 42-yard line. 5.55 to play. The surprising Minnesota Vikings continue to roll. 33-17, to 17, the Minnesota Vikings who wallop the favored New Orleans Saints in New Orleans last week to get here. And now with an even bigger upset over the team with a top record of the NFL all season long. 33-17 to 17, and Steve Young 
Trying to make some miracles happen here with 5.55 to play. And Wilson gets about eight. San inside the Minnesota side of the 50-yard line. San Francisco will go with their hurry-up offense now. No huddles, no time. 5.40 left in the ballgame. Second and two, they mark it right at midfield. Rathman, uh, Sidney, pardon me, Harry Sidney will throw it intended for Rice. Two men on him, and it falls incomplete. That's a tough play when you, uh, you know the other team is basically in a semi-prevent defense. It just makes it so hard. You got to get the team coming up. There you'll see the top right-hand part of your screen. Sidney's going to fly right out, and uh, Young's going to come back. He loses some ground. Young sets, throws the ball on a lateral. Of course, we talked about him being a wishbone quarterback. That's, that's just a grenade launcher right there. And Hail Mary did not fall into the hands of uh, anybody on that one. Jerry Rice has been shut down today in every way possible. Third down. Young, good pass. Good catch by John Taylor to the 35-yard line. What a play by Steve Young being chased deep. Somehow kept his balance, fired it up to an open John Taylor. So Coach, the 49ers keep it moving. Coach Walsh looking on. Under the five minute mark we go. Roger Cray. Pushed out by John Harris at the 27 yard line. That stops the clock with 4.50 left. You know, this, this, is, this was a season of a strike, and there were three football games of which replacement players played in. And if uh, the Vikings win today, those that played on the Minnesota replacement team will get a check for $9,000, at least. That's and, just to get to the next week's final. Right, and then, of course, the, the 49er replacement players will get zipped if they lose. And they won all three games. The Vikings lost all three. Young takes off again and has the first down. Jesse Solomon. There to stop him. Along with Gerald Robinson, number 95. And it's a first down you know, San Francisco. This is a very frustrating situation for a quarterback. You're out there really, you're trying to make something unbelievable happen. And, and there's so, so much constant pressure. Steve Young really handled himself, doing the right things, making good decisions. But it uh, doesn't seem like it's going to be enough to help his ball club. Roger Craig with that catch. Good for about three yards to the 20. Bill Walsh must be wondering what happened here today against a team that he knew was dangerous and knew was capable, but certainly was confident that he could beat. Intended for Mike Wilson, incomplete. You know, Minnesota's a team, you see what they're doing to the 49ers today. They've lost, they lost three of their last four football games and in the regular season. They've come out against New Orleans last week and against San Francisco today like an entirely different ball club. And I think the big difference has been their defense has played very consistently for them. In three of those losses, their offense has had an inability to help out and, and take advantage of turnovers. Now what's happened is their offense has caught up with the play of the defense, and you have a truly almost dominant type of a team. You've got a dangerous team for the winner of the Washington-Chicago game, that's for sure. Young gets some time, and a flag is down. He tried to hit Frank with the ball off his fingertips, off the hands of a defender as well, incomplete. Flag on the play. And the other point, you know, if Minnesota hangs on today and wins like it looks like they will, they will have beaten the two teams in the National Football League with, with the best records. Best records. Yep. So if, uh, you know, if I'm either a, a, a Redskin or a Bear, obviously I know I have to Defense, take care of Defense, number 75, offsides, five yard penalty, will replay the down. Obviously, if I'm on those teams, I have to be concerned about what I'm watching here. There you see, looking ahead, they versus Chicago. They've not met in playoffs since 61, 1961. Of course, with the Redskins, the last four times that Minnesota's played them, the Redskins have won. But the last time they played them, Regular season a couple of weeks ago was a game they should have won. Lost in overtime to the Redskins. And the Bears were light as to beat them. Touchdown, John Frank. Another good job of scrambling by Steve Young. 
49er owner, Eddie DeBartolo, not smiling yet, but has to feel good about that effort as his team stays alive here with 342 remaining. Again, it's Joe, it is uh, Steve Young's ability to buy time. You'll see the pressure that the front gives him. He gets moving around in the pocket, just buys himself some time. Here comes Millard, almost scot-free. Thomas is taken outside. He just flicks it off to John Frank, who is the only tight end they have, and manages to get in the end zone. Wershing with a point after. So the margin is now, now reduced to 10 to nine points, 33 to 24. As 49er ownership says, hey, we're still in this. Tim Ryan with Joe Theismann, 3.42 to go. Steve Young connecting with Frank from 16 yards out. Has brought the margin to 33-24, but the Vikings handle the short kickoff very well indeed. The onside try, and it's Viking ball in San Francisco territory at the 47-yard line. They had their hands team out there, and Steve Jordan handled the ball well. There's Floyd Peters. That's his entire defensive unit around him, telling him what's going to happen next time San Francisco has, gets their hands on the ball. Aaron Nelson plows for about four. Jeff Fuller on the tackle. The thing you'd want to do now if you're the 49ers is you're, you want to tackle the guy, okay? Hold him up and allow your teammates to come in and try and rip the ball loose. Now, if you're if you're Minnesota or one of the ball carriers, whether it's Allen Rice or, or Darren Nelson or or Alfred Anderson, what you want to do is you just want to hang on to that football, and if you don't gain a yard, it doesn't matter. Just keep the clock running and don't give up a turnover. Second down, seven. Allen Rice. And only about a yard, the ball came loose. Was he down? 49ers strip the ball, but who's got it now? And there's the word. He was down before the fumble. Viking ball. You know, it's funny. I've, I've seen it so often. As a, as a quarterback, you get in the huddle, and you say, don't fumble, don't fumble, don't fumble. The runners become so conscious of it, they almost overprotect it. And this is what happens. Sometimes the ball, now he said he was down. Ooh. He said he was down. I don't know. I got to be perfectly honest with you. That one might require another look see. San Francisco, second timeout. 49ers take a timeout. Might they be hoping that uh, replay would still look? I wonder, I wonder what part of his body was on the ground. There's Ronnie Lott coming over now. This is the reverse angle. You'll see him. Right there is the ball carrier. Now, look at that. Yeah, the replay booth said that uh, he has been ruled down by contact and they cannot review it. It's not up for review. There are only certain instances that you can review the ball. This is not one. Well, the whistle had blown stopping the play. I gotta be honest with you, that was a fumble. Well, that was something that was added during the course of the season, too, to uh, make sure that uh, that was clarified. So down by contact, the ruling there, replay not involved, and it remains Viking ball. And what's so interesting is Bill Walsh is a member of the competition committee. He said that the, uh, the competition committee is in favor of the instant replay. Wilson deep. Complete down to the 10-yard line, Anthony Carter. Perfect pass from Wade Wilson to Anthony Carter. Again, we saw Anthony Carter before run that little out and up. Here we go again. He just flat starts up the field, runs a little out pattern, turns McKay around, and gets that one step on him. Perfectly thrown ball. Now, Wade Wilson has been criticized for missing the open man on some of his deep patterns. He's just looking for somebody to give a high five Boy, to. Boy, I tell you, that one he has every right to be happy about. Ten catches, 227 yards for Anthony Carter today, establishing an NFL playoff record. Bob Schnelker, even with a little smile on his face. There you see the, the glasses and the sweatshirt. 
First and goal at the nine, 2.36 to play. Alan Rice gets down to the two yard line. Walter and Lott making the stop and the 49ers send on four new defenders. School is effectively out. Speaking of school, uh, Snail Lake Elementary back in uh, Minnesota, Leo Lewis and a group of the Vikings have gotten together and every team that the Viking plays, they help these kids learn geography. So the lesson for the Snail Elementary, uh, Snail Lake Elementary School class, fifth grade class this week, was something about the city of San Francisco. Now they're gonna get a help again next week by having an opportunity to go on and study <laughs> about either Washington or Chicago. They, they continue to expand the minds of those youngsters. That's right. Back in Minnesota. Two minute warning. Well, the story of the game Certainly a large part of it is right in those statistics. A duel that was set up between Carter and Rice has been won handily by Anthony Carter. The Vikings defense did the most difficult job of all. They shut down the explosive Jerry Rice. Two catches today for just 20 yards. Carter, meanwhile, as you can see, 10 big ones, including the one just moments ago. It has the Vikings on the doorstep again. Two minutes to play. There is never one hero in a big, important game. D.J. Dozier stopped at the line of scrimmage. And while Carter certainly gets a lot of credit, Wade Wilson, getting the start, has had to uh, be a team player all season long with the uh, problems involving the injury to Tommy Kramer, the back and forth, the starting quarterbacks, the relieving quarterbacks, and Wilson finding out yesterday he would get the start in this playoff game against the 49ers, the best team in the league. And he certainly uh, has had himself an outstanding afternoon. He didn't really anticipate it either. He felt for sure that Tommy Kramer would get the nod in this game, as he did against New Orleans. 22 to go. Anderson, or Dozier again, pardon me, D.J. Dozier tripping over the quarterback, Wilson, on the handoff and lost about two yards on the play. But the clock continues to tick. And it ticks for the San Francisco 49ers, who have had such an outstanding season. Nobody expected that they would lose to Minnesota here today, except perhaps the very loose Vikings, who said, okay, we backed in, so what? We're here, we beat New Orleans, we think we can beat the 49ers. That's the first time in this decade that a team without the home field advantage will not go to the Super Bowl, excuse me, with the home field advantage for the NFC will not go to the Super Bowl. Here's John Frank looking on, the end of a season. Tremendous disappointment for the 49ers. <laughs> Jerry Burns <laughs> Sometimes did not authorize that timeout and <laughs> expressed himself so. Somebody on the field for the Vikings called timeout. 30 seconds remains. Doesn't really matter a great deal, but yeah, well, here's caught him by surprise. Here's one that comes back and, and gets you. You and I did a game between the uh, Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys when they ran a fake field goal with very little time left on the clock to uh, put some points on the board. Um, now Minnesota comes out and they're going to kick a field goal with a nine point lead and only 30 seconds to go in the game. Um, I don't wonder about I, I wonder about this one, too. It'll be from the 13-yard line, a 23-yarder for Nelson, who's had four of four in the game. So it'll certainly pad his stats if he makes it. And he does. Well, he's been perfect in two playoff games. Chuck Nelson, who has had a lot of problems during the regular season. What a confidence builder for next week against the winner of Washington and Chicago. He's eight for eight, and look who's giving him a hug. The guy with the little leopard hat, that's Greg Coleman. Of course, he's lost his job this year to, to Bucky Scribner, and he's, I can't wait on next year, so I'm gonna be back. There he is. What a great Scribner. team player he is, though, and that's a real genuine example of it right there. He had to be tremendously disappointed. Yeah, his nickname is Touch. Losing his job to Scribner. Well, all of these folks you've seen their names rolling by, we thank them all for their efforts today and all season long, and particularly uh, our spotter, Terry Kane, our statistician, Dick Fossett. Well, this is a happy group. As you mentioned, they've had difficulty turning on the 
Minnesota football fans this year. I think after today, suddenly all of that uh, hoopla surrounding the Twins will now be transferred to the Vikings. Harry Sidney returning the squib kickoff to the 32-yard line for San Francisco. You know, if you want to look ahead and you're a Minnesota fan, there's only been one other team that's won all four on the road and gone on to the Super Bowl, and that's the Los Angeles Raiders. And there's some well-deserved congratulations for Wade Wilson. And General Manager Mike Lynn with that congratulations there on the disappointed faces of the 49ers who had the two-week layoff and waited the Minnesota Vikings after the victory against New Orleans last week and were favored by 10 and a half, 11 points to win here today at home. And this stadium virtually empty now. Steve Young, Jerry Rice flips off a lateral intended for Roger Craig, goes out of bounds, and it was apparently a forward lateral. Two flags are down. There is a happy uh, Jerry Burns, and you don't get to see him smile too often on the sideline, folks, even when they make a good play. But uh, well, now he realizes. Five yards from the spot of the foul and lost it down. He's got a victory. There's two guys that are extremely disappointed. I guarantee you, Bill Walsh did not want to make the decision to take Joe Montana out of the game. And knowing the kind of competitor that Joe is, he certainly did not want to be pulled. Randy Cross, a real warrior for the 49ers. Showing his disappointment. Young gets it off to Dwight Clark. Clark flips off the lateral to Young. And Young gets to the 45. And of course, this is going to be three years in a row that Minnesota will have beaten San Francisco. 